Good morning to you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. We've got another, an additional non-starter to this race, and it's Brian McCormack. I'm going to go and have a word with Brian if I can. And uh, Brian, I think dejection is the look on your face, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. See how lads line up here, it's got, especially the week we had. Uh, we didn't get a flying lap in, but I knew the pace was kind of there. And starting number 22 was the best opportunity we ever had here, you know. But, uh, uh, look, it's for a reason. We have a, an, an engine flew in this morning, so we'll get a sorted and get out practice next week. It's only just popped in. You were hoping for it to be here late last night, weren't you? Yeah, I was trying to pay the pilot a few extra people to get here, but uh, no, unfortunately, there was nothing we could have done, you know, and uh, everybody's been very helpful, and, and to be honest, they've, everybody's tried their hardest, and the lads have worked so, so hard, so I said I'd pit in for Richard McLaughlin here and change his voices for him and look busy. I've never watched a race before, so this should be interesting. <laughs> uh, good job you're not doing the fuel. <laughs> yeah, you asked me, what, uh, sorry, not doing the wheel change, not doing the wheel change, oh, no, visors will do, so... Um, yeah, yeah, we'll enjoy, we'll enjoy the experience of it. It's a different experience watching, I'm sure, but I'm just so got it, absolutely got it. All right, listen, we'll let you hear and contemplate that. Thanks, Brian. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, cheers. Thanks to Brian McCormack. That massive, massive disappointment for him. And I, it is, you can see the look on your face. In fact, if you go to our Manx Rare Vauxhall Radio TT Facebook page, uh, Mark will have a picture on that very, very shortly. Let's speak to, uh, I think we could call Mark Parrott a veteran now, near enough, couldn't we, Mark? I mean, he's coming here for how many years? Uh, TT since 2000. 16 years then? Yeah, yeah, I was a newcomer at the Manx in 99, straight on for the good old days when you used to do the production race at TT yeah. and then pull out the senior if you qualified for it. So yeah, 16 years, only missed two years because of injury. And the, yeah, that was when you injured. What about this? What about your BMW for, for this year? Same bike as last year, is it? Yeah, same one as last year. It's a 2010 model. Uh, this was a bike that Adam Child and all the journalists were thrashing around in Cartagena back in 2010. So I bought it from Vines, who had been running it for them. And uh, yeah, she's been getting a bit long in the tooth now, a bit like the rider, really. But uh, yeah, it still goes OK. At the end of the day, you could probably put me on that RCV. And I wouldn't go a lot, lot quicker. Yeah, I'm getting old and tired now. You'd never go on that RCV, though, wouldn't you? I would do, yeah, yeah. But I'd probably be a bit embarrassing. I probably wouldn't do it justice. But you know, all these young kids are coming through now. I look around and I think, all these young kids, you know, I should be beating them. But then I think back, my first TT full on in 03, I mean, I was eighth in the senior on a 750. So I'm thinking, I was the young kid then, stepping on other people's toes. <laughs> and now there's lots of young'uns coming through and treading on mine. But it's good to see, because it keeps the TT going. And, you know, they're doing a great job of raising the profile and that. And a few glitches with running the event. But it's it's raised, it's, it's back up to where it used to be, when it was just after it lost the World Championship level. So we hope it keeps going. And we're just out here today. Now, I, I do it to get as good a result as I can and enjoy it, really. Practice week good? Yeah, it was all right. I mean, it's perfect weather for everything. The flies were horrendous. You know, sometimes it's coming in every lap just to change the visor because you run out of tear-offs. But yeah, I mean, it's good practice. We've got nearly four laps every night. Two, two of the nights you missed, uh, only got one lap on the big bike because of problems. Fuel tanks, common things, you know, you've had them enlarged, welded, they split, they leak, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's been, been a really good practice. We've really had the weather with us this year. All right, Mark, good luck for the race. Cheers, Chris. Yeah, dressed in black, too. Yeah, well, you know, veteran, as you say. It goes to the classic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> get, a, get a pudding base and helmet and goggles, too. Yeah, I, I don't know where that would keep up the speeds these go. <laughs> good luck, Mark. Cheers, Chris. Thank you very much, Chair Mark Parrott. It is good to have a little chat with Mark. And yeah, 60 years, I can't believe, honestly, it has been that long. 10.37, which means 22 minutes and a bit to the start of this RST. Superbike race, six laps is the distance. And let's go into the Jackson Racing team and get on. Oh, it's nice and cool in here. And Stevie Mercer, fair to say, Steve, you're enjoying it. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, I've had a great week, to be honest. We've had, you know, done a lot of laps. The weather's been great and the team's been great. The bike's been great. Everything's just gone perfect this year. And, you know, hopefully we'll all have a safe, a safe race, you know, and yeah, just have a safe race and all come back in, in one bit and have a bit of fun. Fastest laps ever, though, going good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've done my fastest standing start lap on the super bike. I've done my fastest outright lap on the super bike. I've done my fastest standing start and outright lap on the super stop bike and 600. So everything, you know, it's really weird. Like, I, I've almost felt like I, I'm going slower to go faster. Like, running into corners and stuff. I'm not, um, I'm just, just rolling the throttle off early, getting my braking done upright and then dip into the corner and then, you know, just getting on the gas hard on the exit. And it actually makes it safe for the ride. All right, Steve, good luck today. Cheers, see you later. Thank you, Steve Mercer. Cheers, back to Tim in the tower. Yes, we're just looking down, and I can see uh, David Cretney there, uh, MLC, a member of the Department of uh, Economic Development, and he's just introducing the Lieutenant Governor, Sir Richard Gosney, to the Scouts. And in a moment, uh, we will 
have our anthems once they have uh, lined up there down on what will become very shortly a bit of racing tarmac here on Glen Crutchery Road. Just a few words being spoken and uh, we just uh, have the anthems to go first of all. So ladies and gentlemen, please first of all be upstanding for the British National Anthem. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We hope the uh, Lieutenant Governor, Sir Richard Gosney, enjoys his first day at the TT Racers, the world-famous TT Racers on the Isle of Man. We'll go back to Chris, but I'll just give you a couple of little uh, things to look out for, Chris. Alan Connor is starting his 40th TT today. Uh, Daniel Hegarty is starting his 25th. Ian Locker is looking for his 100th finish. Dave Madston Migdal starting his 129th race. And Mark Parrott is looking for a 40th finish. Chris Kinley. Derek Shields just in front of us here at 125.6. Let's jump into the back of the Burroughs Engineering garage and just see. It. Oh, it's lovely and cool in here. Really, really nice in here, Derek, isn't it? Should we stay in here? Uh, it's like a greenhouse in here. It's Rolston. That's lovely. <laughs> That's not too bad. Yeah, looking forward to the race now. Uh, just try and take it steady at the start and make sure we have enough gas in the tank for six laps. So I'm uh, looking forward to it in general, you know. Is that lap you did the other night? Is that your quickest, 125.6? Yeah, that's our quickest. We got held on the mountain there a bit too, so, you know, a little bit of time still left in it, so. I'm riding nice and smooth. I'm happy enough, like, you know, I'll just keep it real. I'll let you some, get your bananas in you. Good luck, Derek. Cheers, Chris. Thank you very much. Cheers. And, uh, well, past the Burroughs Engineering team, and, well, I think I thought uh, with John and the team today, they should have had Malachi Mitchell Thomas racing here, and I'm sure he would have said definitely uh, the Isle of Man alight today. And uh, his father's there, and I've just said uh, a quick nod to him there. Uh, Lee Johnson's just in the back. We'll grab Lee when we get up on the uh, the grid. But I want to find, if we can, I'm not sure where he is, Dan Hegarty. He was around earlier on. I did see him. The bike's over there, but I can't see Heggs probably getting out of the uh, the sunlight. Actually, watch out for that there. And Chris, I was going to order Chris Dixon, but he's gone to the toilet. <laughs> Sean Anderson. <laughs> you look roasting, Sean. It's a bit warm around these parts today, it has to be said. <laughs> what are you saying about our Isle of Man weather? I always love the coming to the Isle of Man, especially when the sun shines, you know. It's just maybe, you know, you have to be very quick to get it sometimes, but it's been glorious so far. You've had a couple of problems practice week. Tell us about them. Yeah, just a wee bit, wee bit of stability from the chassis. And to be honest, the, the old Suzuki have run it here now four years. You would have thought it would have been dialed in by now, but... It's the enigma that is the Isle of Man. You come back every year and something's a wee bit different and y you know, you even see the top boys struggling. So for us privateers, you're, you're always up against it. And also this week, you know, I think uh, guys in race control have done a top job. You're doomed if you do and doomed if you don't. Cause last year, everybody complained about lack of practice with the storm. And this year, I think everybody's complaining. We've got so many miles and guys' engines are going and things like that. I think today will be a real race of attrition sort of thing because of the high mileage during practice week so i think pace will be high uh, expect a spectacular race from the top guys we'll see where we can go hopefully we'll march forward we're not the best place on the road but i started 21st on the road twice and sometimes it's an advantage sometimes it's a disadvantage we'll see what comes during the day you got a new job now, haven't you? Is it with KTM, I think I read, was it? Yeah, yeah, we're out based in Austria now, working in R&D for KTM. So hopefully maybe some at some stage down the road, we'd love to tie something up and bring a KTM here. You know, I, 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 it's still early doors for me and the company, but if, if, we could, if we could move in the right circles, I would love to bring something a bit fancier here. You know, it's like an RC8, something new, an RC8R or something. Yeah, well, there's obviously the RC16 MotoGP bike coming and stuff like that. There, it would be very interesting if you if you get something with the suitor and the RCV for Bruce and all the rest. Obviously, bringing Exotica to the Isle of Man is the new thing to do. So, uh, I don't know if a, a small time operator like me will ever bring anything that nice, but if I can, I will. All right. So was that you? This wasn't your quickest lap the other night, was it? No, it was my quickest of the week, but but I've uh, been around in around 126. So hopefully made another couple of wee changes, a few clicks here and clicks there, and we're starting to get on pace. The other big problem we've had is I uh, haven't rid a big bike since here last year. Uh, out in Europe, I'm riding a 750 and a Super Mono. So it's a wee bit different. You, you realize how much pull when your arms are getting stretched. You know, the first couple of nights was a bit of an education. So hopefully... 
today we'll just have a nice good steady run keep marching forward and see where we end up good luck sean anderson thanks thanks very cheers, much cheers no problem at all so there we go that is 15 minutes already to the start and Mikko sweeney's here 125.4 Mikko, the quickest ever laps around the isle of man for you and you're looking a bit chilled you're a bit stressed last night though yeah a little bit stressed last night chris but I don't know, I had a couple of chat with a few people there this morning trying to calm me down a little bit because I'm usually crap on myself, but I don't feel too bad, to be honest. What are you looking for today? Six laps of practice, set it up for the senior? Yeah, definitely. Look, at we're on a tyre here that we didn't use all week. You know, we have a six-lap slick, slick tyre in, so I don't know what that's going to be like on the fourth lap. Um, hopefully just a build on speed, really. Six laps. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good luck, Mikko. Cheers, thanks a million, Chris. You're welcome. Cheers, thanks very much for that. We're going to make our way up the grid. Just watch you back through there. Nearly at the... The Norton runs somebody over, Ian Pattinson going down to where he has to go. And we're up on Glen Crutchy Road and over on the far side, we can just see they've changed it a bit this year. Again, they've got little barriers uh, to try and keep the riders with a little bit of um, protection because it's so, so busy in there. Rob Barber's here and uh, safe to say, Robert, uh, the old R1's been playing you a few tricks, hasn't it? Yeah, she has. Um, my team have been working flat out for the last, well, since Monday night, really, on the 600 and the, the R1. We're moving in the right way, direction with it, and we'll only see what, what this race can do. If we can get a finish, it'll be a result, really. Um, I like the R1. It just, just teething problems, brand new bike and stuff. So, you know, got to take it as it comes. You can't, you can't force anything around the Isle of Man and just hope for a finish. All right, Rob, good luck. Cheers. This is my wife here. Hello, my wife. <laughs> okay, cheers. Keep him, keep, keep him calm. Keep him calm. Thanks very much. Thanks to Rob for a little bit of a quick chat there. We talked to Stevie Mercer and the in the cool of his little garage that he has and let's get in it's around here sorry michelle just want to get in i don't want to miss any of the riders if possible as they're coming up to the top to see dean harrison's number 12 machine uh, tim o'hanlon i don't know where you are me old mate you'll be around here somewhere there he is yeah okay needs to keep an eye for number 25 dan hegarty he's been going uh, very very well in practice really really well shall we say we'll try and grab him if we can and if he, if he comes up to the top here in a second i did see him around a little bit earlier on but i think he's just kind of uh, disappeared the norton's there the number 15 i want to grab a chat with david johnson too and that's the t-bike he's got there so he ought to just stand by there's a bike being pushed up there Mikko sweeney getting his picture taken let's move down to the front see so we can see the boys here yeah i think sensibly they're trying to keep out of the um out of the sun because it is very very warm here it's okay yeah, so all the numbers, what they do is they do all the separate announcements just to get the various teams out. And again, there's not many of the big, the, the top riders up the front anyway here as of yet. Don't have the number four machine of Ian Hutchinson. That's not being wheeled up through here yet. John McGuinness's bike is here, but John isn't up here yet. Don't see Bruce's, uh, miss, uh, Bruce's bike here yet, but Bruce will be around. Let's walk back up, Mark, out of the way. <laughs> it's all this new stuff that they have up here. Sorry, Richard, I don't want to bump into Milky. Let's go through a little bit forward, just move a little bit further back. Looking at those practice times and keep that in your mind. That lap record, unofficial though, I think it's going to be blown completely to smithereens today. In fact, I would say conditions are even better than what it was last night. That sun is going to be a little bit higher in the sky. And we'll just squeeze past this gentleman here and have a word with uh, James Hillier. James, good morning. Good morning. Are you ready? Yes, I think so. <laughs> so We've had oh, look out. Whoop, hang on. <laughs> the bias, it's confusing this year. They put a new bit of out. What about practice for you, though? Nice and steady. It's like you said in the week. It's only practice. Yeah, yeah, for most people, I think. But uh, you been tough, is it? Uh, not really. No, usual. You know, we've had some good weather. Probably a bit too much good weather for my liking. It's uh, given everyone a bit of an advantage. But you know, I think everyone's going to have all their cards on the table today, and it should be a good start to the race week. It's going to be fast. I know that. And you've got a new bike this year, and you've been a few problems. You were saying early on the week, the new model of the ZX10. Uh, not really problems. Just finding where what works, what doesn't. You know, but uh, we we are um, good. Feel good for this, and uh, we're, we're, we'll find out, won't we, in a minute? But <laughs> I just I just want to get going, get cracking. It's six laps, a long race. It's weather's bang on there's no, not a lot of wind so it's going to be a, a good a good day i think if you catch bruce up i'm just checking to see if you've got two sets of earplugs in because that thing's loud i know yeah that's one uh <laughs> something i'm actually looking forward to is listening to that thing she sings but uh we'll see you know that's the best plan plan catch catch uh, catch bruce and um take it from there you know watch the board see where we are good luck Thank you. Thank you to James Hillier there in practice. Uh, Mark, you need to keep an eye on Tim. You need to keep an eye on for these riders. This is Gary Johnson. I think the best bet would be to probably just to move in here now. Here's Connor Cummins in practice. Connor, 129.986 for the big man from Ramsey. Connor, he's gone that way now. Okay, Connor, 
He's got to go to the little boys' room. That's more important to speak to me. We'll get him when he comes through. And Gary Johnson's here. What's Gary done in practice? 128.029. Gary, all right? Yeah, not too bad. Cheers, Chris. You know, sat here first race. You know, we're a little bit behind, bit down uh, on the speeds in practice, but starting to get a little bit of an hang of it and uh, hopefully can pull a little bit more out of the bag on race day. We've found a few problems and uh, we'll work it here. Obviously, get a good first lap in. Uh, maybe then try and settle down and then pick it away and uh, learn for Wednesday's practices and Friday's race on this bike. So you're going to just head for a steady finish today and use this as a practice like a couple of others maybe, but knowing you, probably not. Come on, Chris, it's not steady out there. Even when not with you. Even when, we're, even, when we're not, even when we are taking it steady, it's still a stupid pace. But uh, no, no, I'm looking forward to it. You know, we know we've improved the bike. You know, we've done some things to it. So uh, fingers crossed, uh, you know, I, I, need to, I need to get a bit of consistent laps in and uh, learn the system on the bike and we can make improvements for later on in the week. All right, good luck, Gary Johnson. Cheers, mate. Cheers, thank you. And uh, Michael Rutt is there. We just want to grab Michael Dunlop before he gets all his gear on. It kind of gets crowded out and uh, just looking very, very chilled. Just a uh, bit of a fist pump for the team boss there. And uh, good morning. All right, good. Yep. Yeah, good yourself. Keep it out of the sun. It's a warm one. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's hot out there, yeah. So, ah. Sure, it's been hot all week, so we know what it's like. 132.7 last night. Obviously, only practice. This is when it counts, so isn't it? This is the business end. Yeah, this is where, where it needs to, need to start and be counted. So, yeah, yeah. See what happens. Just. You're looking very relaxed. Yeah, feel good. You know, we made changes that hopefully should put us in a better direction. And I know how quick I can go. It's just if it all goes to plan, we just see what happens. Good luck. Cheers, boss. Thank you, Michael. Looking as relaxed, and I've seen him for a long, long time. William Dunlop's number eight machine. Uh, Michael Rutter is here too. Rutter in practice, 129.613. Let's get around the back and just chat. <laughs> Sorry, guys, just to jump in there. Michael, have you ever known it like this at the Hell of Man for a week and a half? I think it was about 1985. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, incredible. Great times in practice too for you. Yeah, you know, we've just um, been trying to plug away. Uh, this is the odd bit now, though, um, you know, when you start to go up a little bit quicker, but, um, you know, we just do our best. Uh, go and try and enjoy it and get out on that first lap and uh, try and get stuck in there a bit. Very very consistent 129s all through practice for you, too. Yeah, I wish they were a bit faster, but uh, you always do, don't you? Okay, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much to Michael. Cheers. Okay, just going to move on. There is Connor. We'll see if we can grab him there. You stay there, Tim, if you can. I think Billy just giving him a bit of a hug. And uh, Carol, get in, get in, see the boy. I think your dad needs a bit of a haircut, Rodders. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's a good style he's got going, isn't it? I think he's going for the Robbie Black from Laxey look, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's keeping it local. What about you, though? What about the race? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's going to be tough. Blistering uh, hot weather conditions. Um, but, you know, drop the, drop the clutch and go. you got Rutter just in front here. Yeah, well, you know, everyone in the top 15, 20 has been going good, so uh, I'm just have to get the hammer down early. <laughs> good luck, Connor. Thank you very much. Good luck, Connor. Yeah, I'm sure the boys up north will be listening out from how long to go till the start. I can't see the clock. There's people uh, about here now. How long, Bernie, did you say? Is that six? Well, you can count. Fantastic. Brilliant. He's, he's impressing me every day, that boy, that he can count. I like that. Brilliant. All right, let's just get under here if we can. Peter Hickman, sorry, boss. Just watch your camera there. Just squeeze under there. Thank you very much, sir. Just sort of pushed them out of the way, but didn't. But uh, Peter Hickman just having a bit to television. Don't have Hutchie as here yet. He's probably sitting in the in the thing. Not out here as of yet, but Hilly is on the bike. Bruce will be up here, no doubt, sheltering underneath Annie and just squeezing between Clive if we can. My my little frame straight in. Oh, hey, should we stay under this? This is lovely. I know, it's nice under here. <laughs> How's the body? How's the ankle? Uh, I feel like I've been run over by a bastard. But <laughs> <laughs> Didn't help last night with a couple of laps in, but hey, you're used to that sort of thing, being a bike racer. Yeah, i just got to go out there and just get a good start and just have a bit of fun on it, really. Let, let everybody listen to the sound of the, the thing and see what we can do. Is it fair to say it's still a development ongoing, this? Yeah, definitely. We're just working bits and pieces at a time, so... Like I say, my body's a bit sore, but I'll, I'll give it a go and, and see see what we can do. Once that adrenaline kicks in, eh? Yeah, we'll be right. It's there now, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Yeah, good luck, Bruce. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Let's jump into the number one man who's going to be started number one yet again. Just get around his uh, mechanic, Jules. Just squeeze past you there. Thank you very much. Looking down Glen Crutchy Road for, I don't know, however many times. John McGuinness, and uh, I wish the listeners out there could have just seen that look on your face then when you looked down there. Good morning. Yeah, morning, everybody out there. Yeah, it's just... 
it, that, I don't know, I think I've had about 80 odd starts around this place, but they're all feel the same, super, super nervous up here waiting, looking down Grand Clutchy Road, but we've got fantastic conditions, we've had a great practice, everybody's on fire. Uh, you know, let's just oh, we put a good show on for the for the spectators uh, and uh, do a good job for my, for for Honda. And you know, I don't know, it's going to be difficult. You know, them boys are on, they're going so fast, and I'm not sure whether I've got an answer for them to be honest. But uh, you know, it's six laps, 226 miles. We've got to we've got to get it right for all that time, and we've got to uh, you know have two good pit stops where we're pretty good in the pits. So uh, I'll just keep my head down and not panic too much. Just race the track and and try and enjoy it. And in the end, we'll see where we end up, mate. It's a Glen Helen bit. You normally make your mark on the opening lap, isn't Not it? Anymore. Not anymore. Oh, I was looking boys at, last night. Yeah, I was looking at my sectors. That's my weakest sector, so I nearly read to, nearly sort of sharpen up a little bit, but not making excuses. But I wasn't. That sun was pretty bad. I mean, it's it's not. You can't really complain about the sun, but when the sun's low like that, every night in practice it was difficult to just pick the apexes out. So I was a little bit cautious. But now the sun's perfect conditions. A bit a bit cloudier today, so I'll be able to see through the bends and hopefully give him a run for the money. In your 20 years, have you ever known anything like this here, weather-wise? Never. No, normally we get a night off, and I'm getting old, so it'd be nice to have a night off in practice. And You know, but it's good for the newcomers, it's good for the guys who've had problems with bikes, it's good for the, you know, the, the, the guys who, you know, are still learning the circuit, you know. So, I mean, I, I, I know my way around, and I'm sort of ready to race by Tuesday, but it didn't fair on the other guys. But I've never known it like this. The atmosphere on the Isle of Man's buzzing. Uh, you know, the fans, the kids, the, the new fans, the old diehard fans, you know, even through practice, the Alaman all the way around the track seem really, really busy. So this place is uh, on fire at the moment. And uh, hope, hope this race, you know, everybody enjoys it out there. And, uh, and uh, you know, we'll see you at the end of it. I haven't asked you yet. Has the track changed much from last year? Any new bumps that you've noticed on the lines that you take? You know, there's some, bump, some bumps taken out with, uh, with the waterworks and onto the mountain mile, but then, like the Sulby Strait used to be a used to get a bit of a break down there, but not anymore. It's like a motocross track all the way down. So seems to be a few more bumps here and there, but it's uh, that's the challenges of the TT. You know, it's not going to be easy. So if it was smooth all the way around, it would be easy. But three minutes, mate. Better get my helmet on, mate. Good luck, John. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, there's John McGuinness. The thoughts of him before the start of this RST Superbike TT, and is Ian Hutchinson here yet? Probably not, or maybe not. Sorry, boys. Captain yeah. team just went. I think he's going to make it a last minute job. Me. I really, really do just maybe want to just stay, stay out of the way for as long as he can. Michael Dunlop still looking relaxed, sips and sips of water. And uh, let's have a chat with uh, William Dunlop if we can and uh, see how the, the body is after getting bashed up earlier on the week. How's it, how are you feeling, William? No, I'm not great, to be honest. I like a, there was no wet nights, so it's just <laughs> been no, no rest. I'm hoping, hoping we get six laps done. If we get six laps, we'll be over the moon. Uh, which, yeah. which, bits, which bits are hurting or just everything? Ah, it's just a wee bit of everything. It takes us toll. Just, as, just, just feel ill. Uh, you know, my back's really bad. And I could, it's, it's, it's always been the same with me. It's, uh, it's the same old story. It's my own fault. It's the way it goes. So. I'm just disappointed for the boys because they put a big effort in. And it's such a great big guy. One is capable of winning. It definitely is. But I'm just not at it. All right, William, good luck on this. He's still got the smile on his face. That's two minutes to the start of the RST Superbike TT. That RI helmet goes over the head of Michael Dunlop. We'll make our way down to the front. Still not good, Ian Hutchinson here. I want to try and grab a word with him. And, uh, maybe. <laughs> he's leaving at last minute. Where he's leaving at last, last minute. He is not here as of yet. He will be, I'm sure. He'll probably just heard that little klaxon there. That bike you can hear just rattling along. In the back of the, the microphone there is John McGuinness. He just crouches down, gives the girl a little bit of a tap with his right thing, gives the tank a tap there with his right arm, just to say, come on, see me home. That's what we want. This is what the board says, Tim Glover. Excellent conditions all around the course. Good visibility and have a safe race. I'm pretty sure Ian Hutchinson will be here by now. But to set the scene for the start of six laps in the RST Superbike TT is Tim Glover. Ian Hutchinson has just walked out uh, from uh, the Park Ferme. He's just coming up onto Glen Crutchery Road. One minute to the start of this RST Superbike TT, the start of the Isle of Man TT races fueled by Monster Energy for 2016. An absolute sea of people on Glen Crutchery Road as the first of the bikes, John McGuinness, is wheeled forward into that little holding area where they're on their own. Just the TV crew taking their pictures, North One there. And I can see McGuinness now paddling the bike forward, as is uh, Bruce Anstey behind, and James Hilliard through. It'll be a little bit of a delay because uh, Hutchie has only just got up there, left it, as Chris said, right to the last minute. 
John McGuinness is ready. We've got the starter, Johnny Towers, the MD of RST. The hand on the shoulder is put there by Paul Kermode. As we count down from 10, it's about five seconds to go to lift off here. John McGuinness poised to start his 87th TT race. Here he goes. Front wheel up in the air, right the way to the podium there. He's fighting to keep that down. And next away will be Bruce Anstey, winner a year ago. And a little bit of exotica for everybody to listen to as it goes round the mountain course. James Hillier will be away next. James, a member of the 132 mile per hour club, right down the middle of Glen Crutchy Road, under the bridge, down to St Ninian's. Here's the man who set the world alight with that lap on the super stocker. He's on the super bike, continuing his amazing comeback from horrific injuries. Fastest newcomer of all time now. Peter Hickman is away on the Kawasaki. Gets the foot on the pegs, tucks in now. Down he heads towards Bray Hill. Sixth away. He went quicker as well in the existing lap record. It's Michael Dunlop. 11 TT wins since 2009 for Mickey D. Gary Johnson, two Super Sport TT wins. Can he put a Superbike win to his tally as well today? William Dunlop is next. He's been on that podium four times as it bunny hops its way off the start line there, but he's never been on the top step. Michael Rutter about to start his 60th TT race around the mountain course. He's enjoyed an excellent, excellent practice week. Connor Cummins, the Ramsey Rocket now, entering his second decade as a TT racer. Connor, good line to slightly more to the left, but he now goes central and across to the right for St Ninian's. 11th away is Cameron Donald, back with Wilson Craig. He's starting his 40th TT race today. Number 12, Dean Harrison, already has a win to his name really is after more victories he's got a good start there number 12 13 is lee johnston away now the 26 year old who now lives in hull that front wheel uh, working hard just to keep it uh, grounded there but uh, they're really having to get the start the clutch start here and now we've got the norton no one at 14 so a longer chance to hear those revs hands lifted off the shoulder There goes David Johnson on the Norton. We have no one at 16 and no one at 17. So next away will be Martin Jessup, the 30-year-old from Yeovil. And uh, the hand is uh, on the shoulder there for him. It'll be lifted as soon as that light in the uh, timekeeper's uh, cabin is uh, given. The flag drops as well. Away he goes. And he uh, controlled that front wheel really well there, kept it grounded, and away he is. Steve Mercer, gone quicker in practice than ever before, gets tucked in. Again, he's having to work on that Honda to keep the wheel down. Jackson Racing, Ivan Linton is next. 2014 Privateers champion, Linton is away on the Devitt RC Express Racing Kawasaki. Next away is 25. 25 is Daniel Hegarty and an additional non-starter that uh, Chris Kinley identified at 22, Brian McCormack. A real pity that he was taking it well and he's joining in, getting in the fuel. Here's James Cowton then on the Cowton Racing by Reckless Butchers. BMW, good start there from James. Next away at 24th position is number 50, Derek Shields. Cam Cameron Donald has retired at Quarterbridge. Cameron Donald, a retirement at Quarterbridge. That is uh, Michael Sweeney away, number 37. Next will be number 36, and that is uh, Jamie Coward. The flank Manx flag on the podium drops for him. But let's find out what's happening at the uh, front end. Glen Helen, Dave Christian. Yes, welcome, Tim. The first one out of Glen Helen, too. It's John McGuinness. Took that into the left-hander. Steady round on the power, and he's off away up towards Sarah's Cottage. And uh, the next machine out of Glen Helen 2 now. Again, a little flick to the right. That's the number two bike of Bruce Anstey. And it sounds well, too. 
And, uh, but I don't think he's being caught though because uh, James Hillier has, looks like he's closed that gap. Uh, indeed, Hillier has closed the gap on Anstey, but uh, Hutchinson looks like he's closed the gap on Hillier. He has indeed. Hutchinson quicker than Hillier to Glen Helen on lap one, but uh, we've still got Michael Dunlop and Peter Hickman to fit in yet, and I think they might have something to say about it. It is Hutchinson at the moment, top of the pile. Next two bikes together, we've definitely got somebody being caught. That's five and six together on the road. Peter Hickman and Michael Dunlop. Michael Dunlop is indeed top of the pile now. He nudges uh, Ian Hutchinson down into second place. Just uh, two seconds the gap and uh, two seconds in the opening nine miles is quite a big advantage to pull out. Next machine into the left-hander. That's the number seven bike, Gary Johnson. Doesn't make an impression at the top end of the leaderboard. Uh, but uh, we've still got William Dunlop, Michael Rutter, and the big man, Connor Cummins, yet to come. Here's the first one of those. That's William. Again, he doesn't make an impression at the top end of the leaderboard. He's being caught, being caught on the road by Michael Rutter. Uh, Rutter indeed gets into fourth on our provisional leaderboard, but uh, the, oh, the gap looks about 10 seconds. Here's Connor now into the left-hander. Again, nice and steady from Connor. Just drops into sixth place on the provisional leaderboard, but I think Dean Harrison and number 12. Uh, Dean was fourth fastest in practice, uh, so uh, Dean Harrison might have a little bit of input into the top end of this leaderboard. There was an extra gap. Here's Dino now. Doesn't look fast, but he is fifth placed in the, in the provisional leaderboard. Lap one at Glen Helen for Dean Harrison. So it's Michael Dunlop leads the race by two seconds as Lee Johnston comes through. Michael Dunlop leads Ian Hutchinson by two seconds at Glen Helen on lap one. In third, it's James Hillier. He is two seconds back on Hutchinson. In fourth, it's number nine at the moment, Michael Rutter. He's one and a half seconds back on Hillier. And making up your top five is Dean Harrison, who's a second back on Rutter. Here's the Norton. I'll stay quiet. 194 miles an hour in the speed trap. And uh, that is a <laughs> tremendous speed for Dave Johnson and the Solvey speed trap. 13th place on the leaderboard, though. He's not up there with the really quick guys at the top, but uh, pulling 194 down the Solby straight uh, suggests that he's going to, <laughs> if he can keep the bike going, uh, he's going to have some say towards the end of the race. But at Glen Helen on lap one, it is Michael Dunlop in charge. Two seconds, he leads Ian Hutchinson. In third, it's number three, James Hillier. Two back on Hutchinson. Next machine into the left-hander. That is Martin Jessup, and he's followed closely on the road by Steve Mercer. So Mercer nudging his way up. He's uh, passed Martin Jessup on corrected time into 14th place. Great ride so far from Steve Mercer. That's at number 20, Ivan Linton. Again, not inside the top 10 for Ivan on the opening lap. 15th place. The first two are up to lap bridge. The first three now up to lap bridge. So that gives you an idea of the sort of pace these guys are running on the race. That's uh, Daniel Hegarty through at uh, number 25. He's in 17th place on our leaderboard, but again, not nudging towards that top five. Michael Dunlop leads Hutchinson in third. It's Hillier. Fourth is Michael Rutter. Fifth, making up the top five. Number 12, Dean Harrison. Michael Dunlop now through. Andy and Hutchinson both through Balaf Bridge. Dunlop stretching his lead. 3.6 seconds at Balaf. Uh, 29 comes through us. James Cowton. Nice steady uh, opening, style, opening run for James. Uh, just keeping inside the top 20 at the moment. That's the number 50 bike of Derek Shields. Uh, Derek Shields, 19th place in the uh, lap one leaderboard at Glen Helen. And uh, another machine now into the left-hander. That's the number 37 bike, Mick O'Sweeney. Uh, 20th place, but he's being caught on the road. That's uh, 36 just behind him, Jamie Coward. Jamie Coward indeed goes ahead. Pushes Michael Sweeney outside the top 20. Coward holding on to 17th place. But it is Dunlop on the opening lap who appears to have taken the uh, race by the scruff of the neck as Horst Seiger comes through Glen Helen on his opening lap. And he's followed closely on the road by 44, Ben Wiley. But the story of the race at Glen Helen on lap one, Michael Dunlop leads Ian Hutchinson by two seconds. James Hillier is in third. He's two seconds back on Hutchinson. In fourth, it's number nine, Michael Rutter. He's a second back on Hillier. And in fifth place, number 12, Dean Harrison. He's a second down on Rutter. Back to you at the grandstand. What are you taking home from this year's TT? Visit Motorsport Merchandise and take home more than just memories. Motorsport Merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing. 
Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks and Spencer's Douglas, or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade. Stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories. And the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Vauxhall Radio TT Race Commentary, brought to you by RL360. Vauxhall Radio TT. Well, a sensational start from Michael Dunlop. He's beaten his own sector record between Glen Helen and Balath Bridge by nearly a second. And he's on potentially uh, outright lap record pace from a standing start. We have a gap of 3.6 seconds that Dunlop leads Hutchinson at Balath Bridge. Hillier is third, Harrison fourth, McGuinness fifth. Let's go, Connor Cullivan's retired at Bilaf. Let's go to Ramsey. Disappointment for Connor, but his teammate John McGuinness should be first on the road here to Ramsey Hairpin. We can hear them coming towards us now through White Gates, the left-hander, then the short shift up into Ramsey Hairpin, and here we are, TT 2016 is go. John McGuinness round, again exactly the same place. He takes that left hand off the bar, and gets a clear view, the next one on for the mountain climb, and certainly that will be the case. Bruce Anstey's here next, but he's been caught by Ian Hutchinson, and right behind them is number three, James Hillier. So one, two, three on the road, there must be time made up there, and he takes Bruce Anstey to Ian Hutchinson, but we're waiting for the arrival of Michael Dunlop now to see what the difference will be. Here he is now at Ramsey, Michael Dunlop down through the box, it's still three seconds, increasing, I would say, to four. Michael Dunlop leads at Ramsey Hairpin by four seconds over Ian Hutchinson. James Hilly a third, ten seconds down at Hutchinson. John McGuinness, that is uh, Peter Hickman that's going through there. That was it? Yes, yeah, certainly was. No, yep, yeah, Peter Hickman through safely through Ramsey. He slots into fifth place. But we're waiting arrival of a few more as well. But Michael Dunlop, Ramsey Hairpin, lap number one off the Super Stock, Super Sport, and certain Super Super Bike. And he's a lead of four seconds over Ian Hutchinson. James Hillier, 10 seconds down on Hutchinson. Michael Rutter might move up the list there. Certainly we're expecting him after the Blaff times were posted. And there's two together, absolutely together. The second of these is Michael Rutter. The first is William Dunlop. Michael Rutter takes a lovely line on the inside. And I think he might just get him on the way up to Waterworks. If he doesn't get him on the straight to Waterworks, I'm sure he'll nip up the inside there. And certainly Michael Rutter up to fourth place and he's only one and a half seconds down in third James Hillier fifth place for Michael Rutter there because Dean Harrison I think has made an impression and here he is now he's broken the beam down below he gets the back end sliking out there steps it in through Dean Harrison up into fourth place only half a second down on James Hillier but one and a half seconds ahead of Michael Rutter in fifth and sixth it's John McGinnis seventh Peter Hickman 8th, Gary Johnston, 9th, Bruce Anstey, 10th, Lee Johnston, and in 11th place, William Dunlop. The next to arrival is number 13, Lee Johnston. He's safely through Ramsey and heading up for that mountain climb. But the news from Ramsey, it's now, it's 3.908, so it's virtually four seconds to lead for Michael Dunlop. Here's the Norton at Ramsey, listen to this. Number 15, David Johnston is here. Not revving it out completely, so it might be going for reliability. Keep the revs down. Make sure it gets the six laps in. Certainly it did three on practice. And uh, David Johnson into ninth place. So he has improved from Glen Helen there. He's up into ninth place now. Two seconds down on Gary Johnson, but only half a second ahead of in tenth place. Number two, Bruce Anstey. So going back over the leaderboard again, as the boys will be shortly through the bungalow, so he'll keep a tabs on that as well. The race being led by number six, Michael Dunlop, by four seconds from four, Ian Hutchinson, who in turn is 10 seconds ahead of James Hillier. Dean Harrison on the move, half a second up to James Hillier, and John McGuinness is through the bungalow. There's 19, there's Steve Mercer, and following him round there was Martin Jessup, number 18, very, very fast approach by number 20, Ivan Linton. Where does he slot in? He slots into 13th place with Steve Mercer, 14th, and Martin Jessup in 15th place. So no change on the top there. They are through the bungalow. 
and it's Michael Dunlop who leads by that same margin, four seconds at the bungalow on lap number one from Ian Hutchinson with James Hillier, 15 seconds now down on Hutchinson, John McGuinness holding on to fourth place there, one and a half seconds down on Hillier with Anstey fifth through the bungalow, 11 seconds down on John McGuinness, so no change from Ramsey Hairpin to the bungalow, the difference is still the same, it's still four seconds, Michael Dunlop from Ian Hutchinson, but he is pulling away now from James Hillier, the battle there between the two is well down between Dunlop and Hutchinson that is the situation from Ramsey as we take number 29 the last bike to go through there number 29 James Count is through the hairpin back to the grandstand what are you taking home from this year's TT visit motorsport merchandise and take home more than just memories motorsport merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks and Spencer's Douglas, or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade. Stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories. And the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Vauxhall Radio TT Race Commentary, brought to you by RL360. Vauxhall Radio TT. Another set to record for Michael Dunlop. Balaf to Ramsey. So he's got Glen Helen to Balaf. Balaf to Ramsey. They were his anyway. Hutchie was also inside that Balaf to Ramsey set to record. We are on uh, out and Kronk Nimona, our first rider. We are on from a standing start, outright lap record pace. Could we see the first sub 70 minute lap as well? An extraordinary explosive start to this RST superbike race. Additional non-starters, 57, Fabrice McGuay, 68, Stephen McKnight, 79, Frank Gallagher. My goodness, this is some opening lap we're seeing from Ian Hutchinson and indeed from Michael Dunlop. Sulby speed trap quickest, 193.4 it was for Hutchinson. We've had no time, but we should be getting John McGuinness across the line very shortly indeed. And if we can sort the leaderboard out there on the screen, because we've got riders at Kronk Nimona, the helicopter is overhead. Here is McGuinness, crosses the line. McGuinness, 130.32 for his opening lap, 130.32. But uh, that is Hutchinson, and what have we got for Hutchie? 1702, 132.89. And that is inside the uh, outright lap record. There's Hillier, Hillier across at 130.36, but we await Dunlop. There he is, what are we seeing on the screen? It's below 17, 16 minutes, 58.439, 133.37. What a lap from Michael Dunlop. That is TT history. The first lap under 17 minutes. Wow, indeed. Peter Hickman, 129.43. And the leaderboard then at the grandstand has Michael Dunlop 3.6 seconds ahead of Ian Hutchinson. A sub-17 minute lap from Dunlop. That throws the gauntlet down. We've had sector records going as well. Uh, and, uh, well, Michael Dunlop, as that is uh, across the line there, was Gary Johnson at 129.3. Sector records Dunlop holds. Start to Glen Helen. Glen Helen to Balaf Bridge, a new one today. And Balaf Bridge to Ramsey Hairpin, a new one today. Rutter across at 130.09. William Dunlop, 128.66. Good news for Steve Plater, though. Ramsey Hairpin to the bungalow is still intact. And uh, Dean Harrison is projected as uh, in third place. As uh, William Dunlop has crossed, that's at uh, Kronk Nimona. And here he is. See where he slots in. And Dean Harrison is in third place. Dean Harrison, 130.85, which could well be uh, his quickest lap around the mountain course. So let's uh, just uh, take a breath and uh, see what the gaps are. Michael Dunlop leads this race with that sub-17-minute lap. 
3.6 seconds ahead of in second place number four, Ian Hutchinson. Lee Johnson across at 128.73. In third, it's number 12, Dean Harrison. Dean Harrison is 15.9 down on the flying duo of Dunlop and Hutchinson. Fourth is James Hillier. He's 3.9 down on Harrison. There's the Norton of David Johnson. Quickest lap they've achieved, 129.02. Uh, John McGuinness is in fifth. He's just 0 0.2 down on fourth place, James Hillier. Sixth is number nine, Michael Rutter. He's 1.8 down on McGuinness in fifth. Seventh is number five, Peter Hickman. He's 5.2 down on Rutter. In eighth place, it's number seven, Gary Johnson. He's one second down on Hickman. In ninth, it's number 15, David Johnson on the Norton. 2.2 down on Gary Johnson. In 10th, it's number 13, Lee Johnston. He's 2.3 down on David Johnson. So uh, the Johnston and Johnsons all together. 11th is uh, William Dunlop. And uh, one of the retirement to tell you about, Rob Barber. Well, he's had problems with that R1 all week. He has retired at Bella Crane. Steve Mercer on the Jackson Racing Honda are through there. Mercer at 127.56. Martin Jessup through 125.18. And Ivan Linton through on that uh, Kawasaki at 127.29. But it's worth repeating, isn't it? 16 minutes, 58.439 seconds for Michael Dunlop on the Hawk Racing BMW. That equates to 133.37 miles per hour. The first 133 mile an hour lap here around the mountain course and the first sub-17. How about setting up this race, Dave Christian at Glen Helen? What a start. Yeah, that's tremendous stuff, Tim. John McGuinness through here on lap two. But uh, the gap is visibly down to him uh, now with Ian Hutchinson. Uh, they started, what, 30 seconds apart and the gap on the road, it's visibly less than 10 seconds now, so uh, Hutchie reeling in John McGuinness bit by bit. Here's two together, though. Both flick into the right-hander, then tip it into the left. James Hillier and Michael Dunlop together on the road, and Dunlop's lead, 4.6 seconds here. Bruce Anstey through. But uh, Dunlop leads Hutchinson by 4.6 seconds. He squeezed another second on, out of him on the run down from the grandstand here to Glen Helen. Another second in nine miles. So Michael Dunlop really on the pace today. And uh, the gap between first, second, and third is quite large. We've got wait for Dean Harrison to come through as Peter Hickman uh, gets through here safely on his second lap. But we have a little wait for Dean Harrison, start number 12. And uh, that will give us a rough idea of just how far and how quick Michael Dunlop and Ian Hutchinson have been running. Uh, people to watch out for, though, a bit lower down the order. Starting 45th place, Marco Pagani was impressive here. That's Gary Johnson safely through here on his second lap. Yeah, Marco Pagani started 45th. He was running 21st here at Glen Helen on the opening lap on machine number 83. So keep an eye out for him. Two more interview now. That's uh, Michael Rutter and William Dunlop. They're pretty much together on the road, but of course Rutter much further ahead on corrected time. He had a 10-second start in difference. It is still Dunlop leading Hutchinson by 4.6 seconds here at Glen Helen on lap two, but we await the arrival of number 12, uh, Dean Harrison. This should be him now. Uh, it certainly is. He's into the left-hander, gets the power on, just keeps away from that adverse camber. Dean Harrison does indeed slot into third place, and he is now 18 seconds down on Ian, Ian Hutchinson. So uh, Hutchie and Dunlop pulling away from the rest of the field, and uh, the gap between uh, Dean Harrison and Ian Hutchinson was just under 16 seconds at the grandstand. It's just over 18 seconds here at Glen Helen. So the two guys at the top really pulling out the stops on the opening two laps. But of course, it could all change at the end of this one because we've got pit stops coming up. The general, Lee Johnston, he's through here safely on his second lap. Uh, holding on to 10th place at the grandstand, and he is in 10th place here at uh, Glen Helen on his second lap. And uh, let's just see, we have Arthur uh, Norton. Avo Johnson really had that one lent over, uh, but he got onto the power really, really well, pulled away, ninth place that Norton holding on to. Uh, and then it's again slipping away from Gary Johnson. The gap between uh, Gary Johnson and Dave Johnson was 
two seconds at the grandstand. It is three seconds here at Glen Helen. So uh, Dave o. Johnson slipping away a little bit in this opening sector, but I'm sure he'll pull it out uh, once we get onto that big long straight at the top where the uh, Nortons can stretch its long legs and uh, run up to those high speeds we've seen in qualifying. But the story indeed is about Michael Dunlop and that battle with Ian Hutchinson at the top. And uh, when they get into pit lane at the end of the lap, that's where that 4.6 seconds uh, could build or it could be uh, halved or worse. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I'm sure Chris Kinley will be there to fill us in on all the details. Steve Mercer through, number 19. Uh, Steve Mercer, 13th place at the grandstand, 13th place here at Glen Helen. Uh, Ivan Linton uh, shouldn't be too far away, and Martin Jessup, here's two bikes together. It is indeed Linton and Jessup, 14th and 15th place. But uh, we see that at the grandstand there, Alan Bonner on number 22, he crept up into 15th place, so he might just split Linton and Jessup uh, when he gets through our timing beam here at Glen Helen. Another good starter we noticed on lap one, Dominic Herbertson started 37th. That is Daniel Hegarty on number 25. Uh, Dominic Herbertson started 37th. He was in 25th place here at Glen Helen on the opening lap. Uh, that's number 63, so keep an eye out for him. Uh, going really, really well. Also, I see at the grandstand at uh, the end of the previous lap, good timings for uh, number 43, Chris Dixon, and number 41, Camel Holden, uh, just outside the top 20. So those guys having a pretty solid start. But uh, the battle at the top, as we expected it would be, Dunlop against Hutchinson and uh, Glenn Helen on lap two. Dunlop leads Hutchinson by 4.6 seconds. Dean Harrison is third, 18 seconds back. In fourth, number one, John McGuinness, who's five down on Harrison. Making up your top five, it's number three, James Hillier, who's a second and a half down on John McGuinness. Back to you at the grandstand. What are you taking home? Well, the Michael Dunlop show continues. Ian Hutchinson's keeping him very honest, though. Glenn Helen to Glenn Helen, 134.133. Oh, we're going to see something quite ridiculous. The Ulster Grand Prix record, 133.977. Is Michael Dunlop going to make the mountain course and the Isle of Man TT the fastest road race in the world? The lap bridge, the lead is 5.9. Let's go to Ramsey and Roy Moore. Yes, we can hear John McGuinness, we assume, in the Ramsey area now, but that battle between Dunlop and Hutchinson, only five seconds, certainly caught, catching everybody's attention and uncharted ground. I wonder how the fuel level will span out on that, but John McGuinness here at Ramsey, lap number two, but closely followed by, oh, Ian Hutchinson gets it locked up, he loses a bit of time on the brakes, I would think, there into Ramsey, the back end to a swaying round, but he gets it on, and he's going to get his good mate, John McGuinness, right in his sights, but he is the man of the moment, it's Michael Dunlop, he too steps the back out in a little bit, and it's increasing now, Michael Dunlop leads by seven seconds here at Ramsey Hairpin, as number three, James Hillier is through. James Hillier holding on to that fourth place because John McGuinness is just that two seconds ahead of him. But certainly Michael Dunlop, officially 6.782. We'll call it seven seconds. The lead for Michael Dunlop at Ramsey as Bruce Anstey comes through. And certainly the battered and bruised body. Listen to this go away. Lovely gear changing. There's number five. Uh, number five through Peter Hickman distinctive line that Peter Hickman takes through but uh, Hutchinson and Dunlop the lead 6.782 seconds here at Ramsey on lap number two and I think it will be fuel and tyres as they go down John uh, McGuinness in third place and Ramsey to Ramsey we can tell you Michael Dunlop 16 minutes 53.9 seconds what does that equate to that probably equates to 134 I would think but that is Ramsey to Ramsey so that is a virtually a flying lap 16 minutes oh my goodness I never thought I'd ever see it Michael Rother is here there's number eight as well we've had Gary Johnston through as well and William Dunlop they are all safely through. Bruce Anstey we mentioned. So how does that affect it? We'll have to wait for number 12, Dean Harrison, to get here to give you the complete leaderboard. And he is here now, tight to the inside and round and out and gone. 
and he's still holding on to that third place. He's 22 seconds down on Ian Hutchinson, but he is five seconds ahead of John McGuinness in fourth. In fifth, it's number three, James Hillier, two and a half seconds down on McGuinness. Sixth for number five, Peter Hickman, six and a half seconds down on James Hillier. Seventh, number nine, Michael Rutter, just a fraction of a second down on Peter Hickman. And in eighth place, number seven, Gary Johnston. He is eight seconds down on Michael Rutter with ninth. Number eight, William Dunlop, two and a half seconds down on Gary Johnson. It's then in 10th place, number two, Bruce Anstey, nine seconds down on Dunlop. Lee Johnson should slot into somewhere. Is he here? That's him, number 13. Certainly is, puts surfboarding down as one of his pursuits when not riding a motorbike. And he is the Norton at Ramsey, number 15. So that should change the top end. David Johnson takes the thing on and revving it a bit harder on that particular lap, I would say. Where does he slot into? It is into ninth place, number 15, David Johnson. He's only half a second down on Gary Johnson. And in eighth, tenth place now, it's number eight, William Dunlop. Two seconds down on David Johnson. And then in eleventh place now, number two, Bruce Anstey. Nine and a half seconds down on William Dunlop. With completing our top 12 here. But we can tell you that uh, the, 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 the difference there at the bungalow, we, we noticed on the road that Ian Hutchinson and John McGuinness were together, but Ian Hutchinson has got the lead at the bungalow now. But Michael Dunlop is still the race leader. He's just gone through the bungalow now, seven and a half seconds ahead of Ian Hutchinson. Michael Dunlop leads at the bungalow, seven and a half seconds ahead of Michael Dunlop. The rest remains the same as 19. Steve Mercer tips it into Ramsey hairpin and away, and certainly up towards it. So the pace at the front there, all dependent on whether the uh, thing will last. The fuel distance, it's uncharted territory. This type of speed, and especially from Ramsey to Ramsey, 134 plus miles per hour. Incredible as number 20, Ivan Linton, is here with us now. He's through. His uh, time will come later in the day, and I think that is 48. Is that horse Saiga that was going through? No, it was Daniel Hegarty and Martin Jessup. So they will, where will they slot into our leaderboard? It's 13th place for Steve Mercer, five seconds down on Johnson. In 14th, number 20, Ivan Linton, nine seconds down on Mercer. 15th, Daniel Hegarty, 11 seconds down on Linton with 16th. Martin Jessup, 14 seconds down on Daniel Hegarty. Back to the grandstand. What are you taking home from this year's TT? Visit Motorsport Merchandise and take home more than just memories. Motorsport Merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing. Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks and Spencer's Douglas or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade. Stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories. And the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Vauxhall Radio TT Race Commentary, brought to you by RL360. Vauxhall Radio TT. Seems that one, three, four laps are coming like buses now. We're expecting, uh, su sorry, sub 17, I should say. Uh, well, are we going to get the one, three, four? More retirements. Uh, 54, Steve Hennigan in the pits here at the end of lap one. 53, Andrew Saw. 69, Brandon Cretu. And no joy for the suitor guys either. With 21, Ian Locker. Also a retirement. So we've got a Cronk Nimona, Ian Hutchinson, and John McGuinness. And uh, just also, I can tell you, Michael Dunlop is indicated as well at Kronk Nimona. So what are we going to see? They've got to come in at the end of this uh, lap two, of course, and uh, into refuel. And on to Glen Crutchy Road, we've got uh, Ian Hutchinson and John McGuinness have come through sign, uh, Bedstead and Signposter uh, and, uh, of course, down through Governors. So the klaxon sounds, and it's Hutchinson into view first. He's followed by John McGuinness. And, of course, they've got the speed thing as well there uh, to go. 132.88 for Ian Hutchinson. I'll keep an eye on Mickey D. Here he is swinging in. Is he going to get the anchors on? 
Yes, he has. And let's look at it. It's below 17, 133.39. Chris Ginley. <laughs> below 17, Tim. Incredible, incredible speed. Touchy's got it stopped. He's right at the top of pit lane as we look at the grandstand. John McGuinness right in the middle on the number one machine as we get number three, James Hillier, into the old stop box. But it's Michael Dunlop. We are keeping a little line. It was 7.2. The gap as he went through Cronk Nimone. It's Hillier now in for that stop. What was the difference, Tim, between Hutchie and Dunlop on that lap? 7.5 is the gap that Dunlop has over Hutchinson. Yeah, it's rear wheel time for John McGuinness, definitely also for James Hilly and also Hutchie. Hutchie's away first. John McGuinness is getting alongside him, though. John has a little cautionary look over the shoulder. So it's the Hutchie and John McGuinness. So John has a little look over. Now, is he going to... Ah! Now then, John McGuinness just waved Hutchie through. Michael Dunlop is away. John McGuinness knows the situation with this, and he has just let Ian Hutchison get past him, so he does not want to hold up his friend there as Anstey's in on number two, right in front of us now, and stops. There he goes. So we have number two we have number three and we have number five in here what's the gaps here michael dunlop leads by 7.5 mcginnis up into third at the moment but dean harrison has that at cronk Nemona, 28 seconds back of, H of uh, hutchy in that second place but we're waiting for dean harrison he'll be here shortly as gary johnson comes in on the bmw into the stop into the old stop box through there he goes and into his pit box here's number nine rutter and the very sore william dunlop will be slotting into his pit position any moment now which is about halfway down on the left left hand side but it is Dean Harrison we are wanting to keep a little eye on him 7.5 that's all it was between one and two and there's Harrison now confirmed in third however he's only 0 0.214 back off John McGuinness who of course is in that fourth spot so Dean Harrison and he's about three quarters of the way all the way down the pits there the RCV of Padgett's the Padgett's RCV fires into life and Bruce is away nobody I don't think needs a telling off from the headmaster headmaster just yet Tim and there's Anstey listen to that stand by the top of Bray Hill he's coming your way but it's Harrison we're keeping an eye on what did he do on this lap we'll hear from Tim very very shortly we've got number nine Rutter number seven Gary Johnson we've got also uh, William Dunlop in on the R1 and also Dean Harrison is Rutter and Johnson get away so nine and seven away Gary's obviously caught up that 20 seconds of time but Dean Harrison a pretty good pit stop there by his team the silicon engineering team working hard but hopefully they're going to tell him he's only 0.261 ahead of, of catching John McGuinness who now has Ian Hutchinson ahead of him and will John use Ian Hutchinson as a drag to get him up to that third place is 13 Lee Johnson in and 15 David Johnson in on the Norton Tim yeah, just uh, looking at that, four and a half seconds or so, we reckon, the difference between Dunlop and Hutchinson down there uh, in the pits. Uh, Dunlop was quickest, 53.137. Hutchie, 57.750. Let's go to Tim O'Hanlon. Yes, after the pit stops, Michael Dunlop had a seven-second lead over Ian Hutchinson. Ian Hutchinson has a 30-second lead over John McGuinness, now into third and Patterson six seconds behind McGuinness. Ah, so it's all changed after the pit stops, Tim. Yeah, let's give you some more of the uh, laps then. 130.94 for Dean Harrison on the Kawasaki. Uh, 17 minutes, 17.3. Uh, David Johnson on the Norton, 129.47, slowing down to come into the uh, pits. Lee Johnston, 128.06. William Dunlop, 129.97. Mercer's through at 128.63 into the pits. Michael Rutter, 129.83. Gary Johnson, 129.29. Bruce Anstey, 126.8. Peter Hickman, 130.68 for Peter Hickman. James Hillier, 130.49. Dunlop, of course, 133.39. John McGuinness, 131.45. So coming into that pits, it was 7.5 that Dunlop had over Hutchinson. We'll start to feel and see what that lead is when we go to Glen Helen with Dave Christian. But sector times are being blasted. We've had the lap record blasted as well. Everything's happening, and it's only the uh, third distance that we're at in this race. So, uh, yes, uh, 20 to 12 since 11 o'clock. Quite a lot's happened, hasn't it, around the mountain course here. Quite sensational stuff it has been. So Michael Dunlop has gone two laps under 17 minutes, 133.39 with 133.369, the lap record. Glen Helen, Dave Christian. 
Uh, yes, uh, welcome back, Tim. The uh, helicopter has just gone overhead, so we can't be too far away. And here is the action now. Ian Hutchinson and John McGuinness together on the road. John just hanging onto his tail, but Michael Dunlop reeling them in. All three safely through here on their third lap. Uh, Dunlop leads Hutchinson by now 15 seconds. John McGuinness currently holding on to third place, 31 seconds back. But, of course, we need uh, number 12, Dean Harrison, uh, just to see what that uh, difference has changed to. But uh, at, as they pulled into the pit, seven seconds was the advantage. It's gone out to 15 now. That's uh, James Hilliard through here on his third lap. But uh, Dunlop leading Hutchinson by 15 seconds as they get towards the halfway stage of the race. And uh, that is a tremendous advantage. And uh, he's obviously squeezed a few more seconds out of that in the pit lane. Uh, great work by the Michael Dunlop's team there to manage that. And uh, John McGuinness, of course, pulling over just to let Hutchie pass to give him a sporting chance of uh, catching. And, of course, uh, John has just tucked in on Hutchie's tail as well, getting a little bit of a tow around. So uh, works both ways, that kind of manoeuvre, as Peter Hickman comes through on his third lap, uh, holding on to fifth place, sixth at the grandstand, of course, because uh, we still await the arrival of number 12, Dean Harrison. And uh, machinery does come around from Glen Helen 2. That is... A very distinctive sound in the Honda of Bruce Anstey, uh, but uh, not quite on the pace today. Uh, Anstey currently sixth place. I'm hearing that William Dunlop has retired at the railway at Union Mills. That's William Dunlop holding on to eighth place at the grandstand, has retired at the railway at Union Mills. So that's uh, bad news for William, but everybody shovels up, shuffles up one place. Two more machines interview. Uh, five and seven, Peter, uh, sorry, yes, it's nine and seven, uh, Michael Rutter and Gary Johnson together on the road, but of course, Johnson ahead on corrected time. There's Dean Harrison now. Harrison has dropped behind McGuinness, so John McGuinness now into third place. Uh, McGuinness getting the toe, obviously, from Ian Hutchinson, let him slip past at the end of pit lane, and then tucked in behind him for a little bit of a toe around. That's given John the edge over Dean Harrison, who drops down to fourth place. So your leaderboard looks like this at Glen Helen on lap three. Michael Dunlop leads Ian Hutchinson by 15 seconds. In third place, number one, John McGuinness. He's 30 seconds down on Hutchinson. In fourth place, it's number 12, Dean Harrison, who is three seconds down on McGuinness. In fifth place, number three, James Hillier. He's six seconds down on Harrison. In sixth place, number five, Peter Hickman. He's 13 seconds down on James Hillier. In seventh place, number nine, Michael Rutter. He is just one second down on Peter Hickman. In eighth place, number seven, Gary Johnson. He is 21 seconds down on Michael Rutter. And currently in ninth place, number two, Bruce Anstey. Uh, but I think Davo Johnson on the north might just slip ahead of him. And Lee Johnston as well. That is Lee Johnson. He does hold on to ninth place. But here's the Norton. Uh, Davo Johnson slots in at fifth place, so that's fi uh, eighth place, sorry, eighth place for the Norton. Uh, he is 18 seconds behind seventh place Michael Rutter, and he has a two second advantage over ninth place Gary Johnson. In tenth place, number 13, Lee Johnston, and in eleventh at the moment, and uh, number two, Bruce Anstey. So eight, nine, and ten, we've got Johnson, Johnson, and Johnston. That's a mouthful of Johnson for anybody. But Michael Dunlop is the man leading at the top of the tree. He has got that 15-second advantage over Ian Hutchinson. Been keeping an eye on a couple of the local lads as well, Phil Crow and Ryan Neen. Uh, they both lapped really well at lap one. Phil Crow, 123.4, and Ryan Neen, 123.6, holding on to 30th for Phil Crow and 25th for Ryan Neen, respectively. Uh, Dominic Herbertson, who we spotted on the first lap with a pretty good uh, sector time here at Glen Helen. Last I spotted him, he was holding on to 37th place. That is uh, the number 14 bike. No, it isn't the number 14 bike. It is the number 19 bike of Steve Mercer. And uh, Steve holding on to 11th place here at Glen Helen on lap three. Uh, another name that caught the eye, Alan Bonner. He was holding on to 15th position of Ramsey at lap two. Uh, so Alan Bonner having a pretty good run out here this afternoon. Another machine heaves into view round uh, the exit of Glen Helen 2. Fires into the left-hander here. And uh, 
that is uh, number 20, Ivan Linton. Uh, closely followed on the road by number 18, Martin Jessup. But of course, Linton ahead of Jessup on corrected time. Ivan Linton holding 13th place here at Glen Helen on lap three. And in 14th place, number 18, Martin Jessup. Your top three, though, it's Michael Dunlop with a 15-second lead over Ian Hutchinson with John McGuinness sneaking into third place. He's 30 seconds back on Hutchie. Back to you at the grandstand. What are you taking home from this year's TT? Visit Motorsport Merchandise and take home more than just memories. Motorsport Merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing. Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks and Spencer's Douglas, or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade, stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories. And the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Vauxhall Radio TT Race Commentary, brought to you by RL360. Vauxhall Radio TT. A couple of further retirements. Number 34, Davy Morgan at Braddon Bridge, and also Sean Anderson. His miserable run continues. He's retired at the Ginger Hall. Well, McGuinness is the uh, only person to have lapped at over 130 on a lap, including a pit stop. Are we going to see that? Let's go to Ramsey Hairpin. Roy Moore. I suppose the speculation will be when or where will Michael Dunlop pass the two in front of him, certainly with going through Balaf, it was a 16 second lead, so he can't be far away well in 1978, Halewood passed Reed just up round the corner at Tower Bends on the Ducati and there's two here, and it is Ian Hutchinson who leads John McGuinness, but right behind them is Michael Dunlop he will be able to see them very, very shortly indeed, round he goes, and that is going to well it was knowing his, he wouldn't hang back and just ride round with them. I'm sure that he will take the opportunity to hammer it home. Certainly the Hawk Racing BMW and Ian Hutchinson and John McGuinness there. We have got to wait for uh, D Dean Harrison to get here to give you another t uh, the other position, certainly. But certainly Michael Dunlop, 16, nearly 17 seconds that he leads Ian Hutchinson, Hutchinson here at Ramsey on lap number three. There's number three going through, that's James Hillier. So where does he slot into? Into that fourth place. He's 15 seconds behind John McGuinness. Ian Hutchinson, 16, 16.806. So practically 17 seconds now the lead for number six, Michael Dunlop, over number four, Ian Hutchinson, who in turn holds a 30-second advantage off in third place here at Ramsey. Number number one, John McInnes, but that could all change. There's number five. There's Peter Hickman going through, holding on to fifth place here on our unofficial, well, our official timing here, but certainly that will be changed with the arrival of Dean Harrison. Certainly that is the one they're looking for. Bruce Anstey should be the next to arrive here. Number two, Bruce Anstey. And again, you can tell, was tell Bruce Anstey down at Stella Maris. Just listen to the bike going away. Sounds beautiful. When you see Bruce Anstey coming wide, sweeping out of Stella Maris, you know he's on a flyer. Today, he's on the inside line, off the white line down the center of the road. So that's indication itself that he's not kind of trying too much. So Dean Harrison, is he here? He's ahead behind, no, it's uh, uh, Gary Johnson and Michael Rutter. And certainly there is now number 12, Dean Harrison here at Ramsey. And it is fourth place for him, seven and a half seconds down on John McGuinness. That puts James Hillier, number three, up into fifth place. Eight and a half seconds down on Dean Harrison. Within sixth, number five, Peter Hickman. He's nine and a half seconds down on James Hillier. In seventh place, number nine, Michael Rutter. Seven seconds down on Peter Hickman. Eighth for number seven, Gary Johnson. He is 20 seconds down on Michael Rutter with completing the top nine here. Number two, Bruce Anstey. 22 seconds down on Gary Johnson. So it will be interesting to see. 
I would say that when they approached here, certainly Ian Hutchinson and John McGuinness, just about one bike length between the two of them as they came, but then maybe four to five lengths of bike back from that was Michael Dunlop, the race leader. So it will be interesting to see as they head now up the mountain on lap number, or heading to complete lap number three, an awful lot left in this race yet, you know, another pit stop and everything, and certainly the pace at the front, as somebody was mentioning in race week, I think when Chris was interviewing them, the amount of laps that they're getting in is number 13 is here, 13 is there, and right behind him is the Norton. So where do they slot into? Number 13 goes into 10th place, Lee Johnston, but uh, up into eighth place goes David Johnson, 16 seconds down on in seventh, Michael Rutter, but four seconds ahead of Gary Johnson. So that is the, cu the current positions here. They have gone through the bungalow, 16.954, the lead for Ian Hutchinson. That would indicate there is a possibility that that order on the road is remaining the same with John McGuinness and Ian Hutchinson ahead of Michael Dunlop but certainly that might not be the case as they head down from the bungalow up to the highest point of the circuit at Halewood Rise, then the sweeping left-hander at Brandywell, down through Dukes, the three, four left-handers at the 32nd, as we always knew it, into Windy Corner, the 33rd, Keppel Gate, then the dive down to Cregna Bar, and then the big run down to Brandish, Hilbury. Will he be able to get ahead of them there? The only man who'll be able to tell us will be Tim Glover at the grandstand as we can just take the last man through with the news from Ramsey. It's Michael Dunlop by 16 and a half seconds. That is Steve Mercer safely through Ramsey hairpin holding on to 12th place but only half a second down on Bruce Anstey. Back to the grandstand. What are you taking home from this year's TT? Visit Motorsport Merchandise and take home more than just memories. Motorsport Merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing. Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks & Spencer's Douglas or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade, stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories and the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Vauxhall Radio TT Race Commentary, brought to you by RL360. Vauxhall Radio TT. Matthew Reese will be the last to come into the pits at the end of his second lap, but we're waiting for the leaders to go through on to uh, lap four, as they've already will be completing three. So we're really strung out. We're waiting for the lights to come on for that dueling trio at the front. And of course, uh, Ian. Uh, Michael Dunlop has set lap records on both laps, opening at 133.369, second lap 133.393, that's now the mark, 16 minutes 58.254 seconds, as we look to the scoreboards to see, and it is uh, if, including the pit stop, of course, this lap, some newcomers, uh, as we've got three of them, four, uh, th all three now indicated. Number four, Ian Hutchinson, number one, John McGuinness, and number six, Michael Dunlop. What order are they going to be in? Uh, Mike Booth, newcomer, number 90, 116, as they flash through now, there's Hutchie and McGuinness, there's Dunlop. All he has to do is keep them in their sights, and 126.35 was the lap there for Michael Dunlop. Uh, for John McGuinness, 125.27. And for Ian Hutchinson, 125.21. Let's look at the gaps then. Michael Dunlop, he's just got them in sight. Michael Dunlop just can watch if he likes, unless he wants to go past them. He can uh, just stay uh, behind Ian Hutchinson and John McGuinness. Michael Dunlop, 17.3 seconds ahead of Ian Hutchinson, so six leads four. McGuinness is 30.8 down on Hutchinson, but John McGuinness is benefiting from the toe that he's getting from Ian Hutchinson around here, and that's pulling him away in third place from the fourth place, Dean Harrison. So McGuinness, uh, he did, as Chris Kinley spotted, 
He did wave Ian Hutchinson through at the end of the pit stop at the end of lap two, and he really is uh, now reaping the reward for that decision. Peter Hickman's uh, going well, low 123.45, including the pit stop for Hickman on the Kawasaki. Bruce Anstey indicated at Kronk Nimona, and then it should be Michael Rutter, and uh, then we'll get Dean Harrison, and we'll get, there we go. Lovely sound as it heads under the bridge towards the uh, top of uh, Bray Hill. And uh, we're just looking at half distance. We're inside the race record pace by over a minute. One minute and five seconds inside the race record. This is just getting silly. Three more to come through. Michael Rutter and Dean Harrison. Here they are. Here's Rutter. There's Harrison. And they're through trailing them. And John McGuinness uh, is uh, still in third place. He was at Ramsey. Gary Johnson was the other rider through. So Michael Dunlop is 17.3 ahead of Hutchinson. McGuinness 30.8 down on Hutchinson in third. McGuinness now has an 11.2 second advantage over number 12, Dean Harrison, who is in fourth. Fifth is number five, Peter Hickman. He is 17.8 down on Harrison. Sixth is number nine, Michael Rutter. He's 11 and a half seconds back of Hickman. Seventh is number seven, Gary Johnson. 21.3 seconds down on Rutter. Eighth is number two, Bruce Anstey. 18 and a half seconds down on Gary Johnson. And in ninth uh, at the moment is James Hillier, who is 36.7 down on on Anstey. Yeah, newcomers, number 90, Mike Booth, uh, he has uh, now done 120.12. Uh, in practice, he'd done 116.7. Uh, Alessandro Polita, 117.955. In practice, two more machines. There's the Norton. Oh, a real snake on as it went uh, past the grandstand here. That from uh, David Johnson, 121.6. And uh, that puts uh, David Johnson into seventh position. Lee Johnson also through. He's in ninth position. Alessandro Polita, bike number 91. 117.9 in practice. He's up the ante to 119. And uh, Seamus Elliott on the uh, people's bike, 118.7. Just gone up a notch, 118.76. And uh, Joachim van der Hock also safely through. He's in around 50th position at the end of the first lap. And we'll uh, find out where he was at the end of lap two. So it is Michael Dunlop who still leads... 17.3 ahead of Hutchinson. Let's go to Glen Helen. Well, those are three musketeers through on lap four here at Glen Helen. Dunlop, Hutchinson, McGuinness. Uh, Dunlop leads Hutchinson by 19 seconds. McGuinness third. He's 30 seconds back. John obviously just tucked in behind Hutchie, getting a little bit of a tow, maybe taking the stress and strain off the Honda and uh, ready and poised to strike if there's any sort of incident in pit lane or a mechanical failure with any of the two ahead of him. Uh, he's uh, riding a very, very shrewd race, uh, even though he's not quite on the pace of Michael Dunlop and Ian Hutchinson. And of course, Michael uh, adopting, again, a very sensible strategy. If he can see Hutchie and John McGuinness in front of him, he knows he just has to keep them in sight and uh, there's no danger of being caught from behind. Um, at the grandstand, the lead, Michael Dunlop's lead, 17 seconds, so he squeezed another second or two out of it here on uh, the sector one, uh, but there is some traffic up ahead of them, not far, be, uh, not far in front. Uh, we've seen uh, 78 come through, Alan Connor, uh, I've seen Alexand uh, Alessandro Polita as well on number 91, and also up there and about is Mike Booth on number 90. That's uh, Peter Hickman through, uh, fourth place at the moment, but we need Dean Harrison to really to uh, sort that out. He had a comfortable advantage over Hickman at the grandstand at the end of the lap, and uh, it remains to be seen whether he's managed to keep that. I would think he did. It was uh, 17 seconds the gap at the grandstand. And there's Bruce Anstey. Again, circulated well, but just not quite on the pace on that Honda, uh, even though he's managed to shed all the way to that beard during the week. Uh, Bruce Anstey at the grandstand was holding 10th position. 
Uh, he's fifth at the moment, but we need the time corrections to really sort that one out. So I would think that leading group of three are going to start to hit traffic maybe around about the Solby uh, area and Solby and that run, the bumpy run into Ramsey. And uh, that might well cause some problems for them. There's Dean Harrison now. And uh, he's traveling with Michael Rutter and uh, Gary Johnson uh, in pretty good company there. Dean Harrison does indeed go into fourth place. He was, ooh, he was 11 seconds down on McGuinness at the grandstand. He's now 13 here at Glen Helen. And uh, that is uh, another second or two being pulled out. Another second or two being pulled out as James Hillier comes through. Sorry, didn't see that number there. Thank you, Roy, for uh, straightening me out there. <laughs> he realized what I was doing. Uh, so Dunlop leads by uh, 19 seconds. John McGuinness third, 30 seconds back. Dean Harrison fourth, he's 13 seconds down on McGuinness. Peter Hickman at fifth, he is 17 seconds down on Dean Harrison. In sixth place, number nine, Michael Rutter, he's 14 seconds down on Peter Hickman. In seventh place, number seven, Gary Johnson, he's 19 seconds down on Michael Rutter. But Davo Johnson on that Norton may well split Rutter and Gary Johnson when he gets here. Uh, no sound of engine noise coming up the valley just yet, but I'm sure uh, we'll hear the Norton be long before we see it. Uh, it really does sound well, that uh, big Aprilia motor belting out uh, its uh, engine note coming up the valley here at Glen Helen. And here we go. That's Davo Johnson and Lee Johnston uh, together on the road. And indeed, Dave Johnson slots into seventh place. He is 19 seconds down on Michael Rutter, and he has just seven hundredths of a second advantage over Gary Johnson. So there's a right old ding-dong there for seventh place. Uh, just, uh, well, like I said, a hundredth of a second between them. And uh, that one will continue all the way to the end, I'm pretty sure. In ninth place at the moment, Bruce Anstey. And in tenth, Lee Johnston. That's the number 13. He is just two seconds back on Anstey. Anstey is 18 seconds back on Gary Johnson. Johnson. 11th at the moment, James Hillier, but uh, he was behind Ivan Linton and Steve Mercer at the grandstand at the end of the last lap. And uh, them guys started a little bit lower down the starting order, and uh, we'll need them to come through. Uh, Steve Mercer on ninth, number 19, and Ivan Linton, number 20. Uh, those two will work together on the road, and uh, they shouldn't be too far away now, and they will probably just nudge James Hillier down a little bit unless he's managed to get his race pace back up again. Here's machinery noise now. It's a machine tipped in from the left-hander. That is the number 19 biker, Steve Mercer. Uh, 11th place he is, and he pushes James Hillier down the batting order a little bit, and uh, Ivan Linton may just do that yet when he gets here. Uh, no sign of Linton, though, so I'll give you a quick top 10. Michael Dunlop leads Ian Hutchinson by 19 seconds in third. It's John McGuinness, 30 seconds back in fourth. Number 12, Dean Harrison, 13 seconds down on McGuinness. In fifth, number five, Peter Hickman. He's 17 seconds down on Harrison. In sixth, number nine, Michael Rutter. He's 14 seconds down on Hickman. In seventh, number 15, Dave Johnson. He's 19 seconds down on Rutter. In eighth, number seven, Gary Johnson. He is less than a second down on Dave Johnson. In ninth, number two, Bruce Anstey. 18 seconds down on Gary Johnson. And making up your top ten, number 13, Lee Johnston. Two seconds down on Bruce Anstey. Back to you at the grandstand. What are you taking home from this year's TT? Visit Motorsport Merchandise and take home more than just memories. Motorsport Merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing. Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks and Spencer's Douglas, or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade, stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories, and the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Vauxhall Radio TT Race Commentary, brought to you by RL360. Vauxhall Radio TT. Straight to Ramsey Hairpin, Roy. Yes, absolutely bang on time, and John McGuinness, I think, has taken the lead back on the road, has he been? Oh, DME, 70 and 90, nearly had a bit of a collision. That would have caused a bit of unrest there, but certainly they're through. That the back markers. Yes, John McGuinness back ahead on the road, leading on the road, but uh, right amongst them is Ian Hutchinson and Michael Dunlop. There's no trouble getting past 78 and 91. 
but certainly he is on third on the road now. We thought that might be the case, but certainly still well in command of this race. The margin 19.705 seconds, nearly 20 seconds, that Michael Dunlop, number three, uh, is ahead of number four, Ian Hutchinson, but they are getting amongst the lower order riders now. And John McGuinness was uh, well clear of it there, but certainly I forget the numbers. We did say them on air as they came through. I think it was 70 and 90. We're right on the co on the corner when the boys arrived, but it's no, they're all safely round and gone on a complete lap number four or on lap number four to complete it. And Michael Dunlop holds that 19.705 advantage over Ian Hutchinson here at Ramsey. But that will be the case probably now for the next two laps. And it seems strange, really, doesn't it? That you've got to qualify for this race by lapping it round about 115, 116. And then within the case of three laps, Peter Hickman is trying. He goes that wide line. It's the one he's worked out to get round Ramsey the quickest. And certainly that is the case. He's 30 seconds down, though, on John McGuinness, who is 27 seconds down on Ian Hutchinson. That is the top five through Ramsey here. But again, we've got to wait for the arrival of Dean Harrison, who, when they went through Balaf Bridge, was holding on to that fourth. There's Bruce Anstey getting the bike round. Certainly sounding good as well. Beautiful gear change and smooth as anything on the quick shifter up there towards the waterworks. And Bruce Anstey at the moment slots into fifth place, number two, but 53 seconds down on Peter Hickman, who was 30 seconds down on John McGuinness. So not much change there. We're expecting Michael Rutter and Gary Johnson to be here very, very shortly indeed. And that will put uh, the top leaderboard in together. And here's Michael Rutter and Dean Harrison has got ahead on the road. And Gary Johnson is the third of those through there now. So Gary Johnson away towards the waterworks, chasing the two in front of him. And James Hillier shouldn't be too far away from that. We thought he might have overshot somewhere because he dropped a lot of time. And here he is now at Ramsey. So maybe he did an Ian Hutchinson at signpost or something like that. So that gives us an opportunity now to go through the top nine. It's number six, Michael Dunlop, leading by 19 seconds from number four, Ian Hutchinson, who in turn is 27 seconds ahead off in third place, number one, John McGuinness. John McGuinness holds a 17 second advantage over in fourth place, number 12, Dean Harrison, who in turn is 12 seconds ahead off in fifth, number five, Peter Hickman. In sixth place, number nine, Michael Rutter, 17 seconds down on Peter Hickman. In seventh place, number seven, Gary Johnson. He's 20 seconds down on Michael Anthony Redmond, that is, that you can hear number 75 on the BMW going past. And at Cronk Navona, the three are indicated there. And we should be seeing them uh, onto Glen Crutchley Road very shortly. A couple of back markers. They may well get ahead of them. But uh, Ian Hutchinson, 194.5 was his uh, time through the Solby Speed Trap. They've got to come in and refuel again at the end of this fourth lap. So... We'll hear the klaxon sound, a couple of uh, mechanics just uh, jogging across. You're going to have to get across there pretty quickly because there's going to be three superbikes hoving into view very shortly. And there indeed is the klaxon. So it is McGuinness who is ahead first. He is crossing the line now. Had to really try and put the brakes on there. Same for Hutchie. Dunlop a little bit more in control. Very mature lap down to Chris. What sort of lap time are we talking there for Michael Dunlop, Tim? 131.06, 131.5, 130 and 130.87 it was for Hutchie. McGuinness, the 131.5. Yeah, the gaps are crunk. The Mona was 18.8 lead for Michael Dunlop, 26.2 for John McGuinness. Another rear Dunlop tie going in the back of the BMW for Michael Dunlop. John McGuinness also in halfway down the pit. Hutchie's way up the top. Remember the old days on the stop box, all the leading teams, they all wanted to be right up the top there. Hutchie's probably going to be the first to go, is he? John McGuinness, though, is just about ready now. Great stop by the Honda team once more. So John is away. He's actually been catching time as the lap goes on from the other two there. But it is 
Yep, yeah, it is McGuinness away. He's got a little bit of traffic there, maybe. But here's Hodgie. Here's Michael going as well. Maze the fun. One and two are going together. Six and four on the roads. Oh, ho, ho, ho. there we go. The kill switches get kicked off. Hodgie kicks out into the road. Six and four away. Look out at the top of Bray Hill. McGuinness away first. But then it was, of course, Michael Dullop slightly ahead of Ian Hutchinson. Your next man in is number five, Hickman. He's been steadily making progress up to around about fifth at Ramsey on that previous lap, but it is the number 12 machine. We need to keep a little eye on that is Dean Harrison. He's going to be in that fourth place. We'll get to Dean in a minute, but it's Peter Hickman had that big scare, didn't he, through practice week at the bottom of Garrow with that sump of that oil that came out when he bottomed it out. He managed to hang hold of it just a little bit. Another machine coming in now into the stop box. It's Bruce Anstey on the Padgett's machine. Quite way down for Bruce on this lap, but he must be really hurting after that big get up. Uh, get off up at Keppelgate and the RCV shuts down there now but Tim pit stops made any difference yes after the pit stops Michael Dunlop's got a 15 second lead over number four Ian Hutchinson but McGuinness had a quick pit stop and he's only 19 seconds now behind Hutchie He's been catching him up all the way through the lap. He really, really has. It was 30 seconds at Glen Hill, and then 29, one, then 25, then 25, then 26. So John McGuinness could be on a bit of a charge as Peter Hickman gets away with Bruce Anstey in there now. But it's uh, Anstey just with the chain going on the rear sprocket. The spindle gets pushed in by the team. This gets clattered into place, and here we have a train. We have number nine, we have number 12, and we have number 17. Harrison does slot into that fourth place. Tim. Thanks very much. Yes, I was wondering which Tim for a moment. Uh, on the pit stops, McGuinness, as Tim Hanlon said quite correctly, flying pit stop, 48 and a half seconds. Dunlop was 56.3 and Hutchie 58.3. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Michael Dunlop gained two seconds there on Hutchie, uh, but McGuinness, well, uh, he gained eight and uh, ten seconds on the uh, pair uh, with that flying, really good pit stop by Honda Racing. So, look at the gaps then now. Michael Dunlop is... Uh, leading now uh, are coming into the pit stops and we're going to see this uh, just really truly uh, come to fruition when we get to Glen Helen but Ian Hutchinson 18.8 down on Dunlop coming into the pits John McGuinness was 25.5 down on Hutchinson Dean Harrison coming into the pits fourth and fifth was Peter Hickman Peter Hickman 131.043 Dean Harrison a bit slower 129.502 Michael Rutter 129.571 Gary Johnson is in 7th at 129.544 for lap 4 David Johnson 128.857 that's 4 really solid laps for the Norton there for David Johnson number 15 Bruce Anstey, 130.637. That's encouraging as they were coming into the pits there. Uh, Bruce Anstey, number two. Tenth is Lee Johnston coming in to the pits at 128.744. Eleventh, uh, James Hillier, and he did 129.610. So Michael Dunlop's fourth lap. 17 minutes 16.364 seconds 131.062 uh, ian hutchinson 17 minutes 17.885 130.870 and john mcginnis in third 131.538 that's 17 12 so he was in fact quicker uh, than both hutchinson and dunlop on lap four Fourth, Dean Harrison, 129.5. Fifth, then, is Peter Hickman. He did 131 on that uh, fourth lap. But let's go to Glen Helen and Dave Christian. Yes, uh, welcome back, Tim. Just a couple of higher start numbers coming through there, and they're about to get a shock. As here's the leader on the road, John McGuinness. McGuinness looks like he's going to catch some of those guys along Kronkovody. Might give him an easy pass, and that could cause problems for the chasing pair. There's Michael Dunlop. He's ahead of Ian Hutchinson on the road. But uh, that gap with John McGuinness is coming down all the time. 91 goes through. Alexandro Polita. Uh, but uh, there's a large group of higher start numbers there that are going to get right into the mix. That's uh, 78 through. He's a lap behind as well. Alan Connor. Uh, but uh, McGuinness uh, has got a clear run there. And if he can get through those guys where there's good passing places, uh, it might just give Hutchie and Michael Dunlop a couple of problems. 
Uh, the lead is Michael Dunlop. He leads Ian Hutchinson by 21 seconds now, or 21.7, I guess. John McGuinness is 18 seconds now behind Ian Hutchinson. He has pulled some time back on that uh, pit stop and the last lap, and he is starting to reel in that leading pair. Uh, I guess the tortoise and the hare, look out, hare tortoise is on the way. Uh, hardly called John McGuinness a tortoise, though, but he is pulling in that leading pair. The gap now down to 18 seconds, and uh, McGuinness with a little bit of clear track in front of him, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, the opportunity to pass some of those back markers at uh, a more favorable spot than the other two might get and uh, he may well just pull out a few more seconds there and uh, who knows if uh, the guys have some problems with the machinery he's right there ready to strike that's peter hickman through uh, he is currently fourth place here, but uh, Dean Harrison on the number 12 machine will uh, probably push him down. Uh, the gap between Harrison and Hickman before they went into the pits was uh, five seconds Harrison led Hickman. But if Peter Hickman's pit crew have got their act together up there, they might just be able to sneak a few of them back in the pit lane and uh, make Dean Harrison have to work hard for that fourth place. Uh, Michael Rutter was uh, in sixth place on the entry to pit lane, and we'll have a little look to see how that shakes down now. Bruce Anstey comes through. Lovely sound out of that Honda, but uh, Bruce not threatening the top end of that leaderboard, just hanging into the top ten on the entry into pit lane. Uh, but uh, he will be pushed back a little bit now. We need uh, Hickman, uh, sorry, we need Dean Harrison, uh, Michael Rutter, Gary Johnson, and Davo Johnson yet to come through just to get a little feel for where uh, Bruce Anstey will fit in. Here's a couple of quick movement machines now. That's Dean Harrison and Michael Rutter together on the road. Lovely sight there. Dean Harrison does indeed drop into fourth place. Peter Hickman is in fifth. He is now eight seconds down on Dean Harrison. And uh, Michael Rutter, sixth place. Looked like uh, James Hillier through there and Gary Johnson. Uh, Gary Johnson holding his seventh place, which he had on the entry into pit lane. Uh, Bruce Anstey currently eighth place on my provisional leaderboard, but we do need the number 15 Norton of Davo Johnson just to uh, see how that has shaken down at the end of lap four. But uh, it is Michael Dunlop and Ian Hutchinson at the top of the tree, as same as they have been right from the very start since Michael Dunlop exploded off that start line with a fantastic opening lap. And uh, Hutchie not being able to hang on to him. That lead uh, that Dunlop has over Hutchinson now increased to 22 seconds, nearly 21.7 to be exact. But uh, that's close enough to call it 22. With uh, John McGuinness just nibbling away at their tails, uh, 18 seconds back in third place. Uh, Dean Harrison fourth. He is 38 seconds down on McGuinness. In fifth place, Peter Hickman, who is eight seconds down on Harrison. In ninth, number nine, Michael Rutter, 22 back on Hickman. In seventh place, number seven, Gary Johnson, 33 down on Rutter. That is Lee Johnson, and he is Davo. Lovely sound when he gets that on the uh, on the throttle, on the climb up away from the bottom of the valley here at Glen Helen. And indeed, Dave Johnson does take seventh place from Gary Johnson. Uh, Gary Johnson was in seventh on the entry into the pits with Dave Johnson just two seconds behind him. Well, they've swapped places in Gasoline Alley. Dave O'Johnson now seventh place on that Norton, 25 seconds down on sixth place Michael Rutter, and he has an eight-second advantage over eighth place Gary Johnson. Ninth, Bruce Anstey, he holds that position he had on entry into the pits. He is nine seconds back on Gary Johnson. In tenth, it's Lee Johnston. He is just a third of a second down on Bruce Anstey. So the general gets the uh, pipe on on the lap five. He might just sneak ninth place. Uh, tenth place, Lee Johnston. And eleventh, number three, James Hillier. He was 32 seconds back on tenth place, Lee Johnson. But uh, Steve Mercer may just have something to say about that because he, hold, he held that eleventh place on entry into the pits but not made it here to Glen Helen yet so far on lap five. Back to you at the grandstand. Dunlop ahead of Hutchie on the road then. Uh, retirements Marco Pagani has retired in the pits. Matty Rees at Governor's Bridge and Michael Russell at Crosby Village Crossroads. Let's go up to Ramsey Hairpin. Roy Moore. Well, speculation from Balaf Bridge to Ramsey. Will Michael Dunlop get ahead of John McGuinness now? Well, they were teammates a couple of years back at Honda, but certainly this situation with the lower order riders coming through, that is number 60 who's here with us now, and that's Dave Madston-Migdall. 
but certainly he's got the experience to just maybe move it out of the way as 84 is here with us going through 84 there that is Richard McLaughlin so will John McGuinness he's still leading on the road here at Ramsey I can tell you but right behind him is Michael Dunlop and I'm right behind him virtually is Ian Hutchinson so a slight change there now Ian of stepped out a little bit there on the hairpin for Ian Hutchinson so uh, certainly I don't think it would be a tyre issue he's just the angle of lean that they get round here he was certainly right in the middle as number 80 is here now that's Julian Tanuti another machine interview a newcomer number 90 going very well indeed and that'll be nice to get Mike Booth mentioned on the Danny Tomlinson racing machine 70 59 and 89 89 that'll be familiar back at the grandstand Seamus Elliott on the Bike.com machine, the thousand Kawasaki, the man from Valley Money, Northern Ireland. That's a famous place. Seamus Elliott through Ramsey here on lap number four. But it will be onto the last lap that the boys will be going through. So that is the situation. And we go back to the old argument of the old days when they started in pairs. This was something that didn't happen. As 91 is here with us now. That's uh, Alessandri Palita on the 1000 BMW Pence 13. Com. So there he goes through, and uh, Connor, that is Alan Connor, I think that was the last to go through there as we pick these numbers up from our board. They're getting picked up on the yet. Who's the man we're looking for? It is number five, Peter Hickman, and that is a very, very different line for Peter Hickman going through. I can tell you the lead for Michael Dunlop is 23 seconds here now at the Ramsey hairpin. In turn, John McGuinness is 24 seconds down on Ian Hutchinson. Peter Hickman up to fourth here at Ramsey, 40 seconds down on John McGuinness. But bear in mind, we've got to wait for the arrival of Dean Harrison. And when they went through Balaf Bridge, it was Dunlop, Hutchinson and McGuinness. Dean Harrison was 35 seconds, though, down on John McGuinness. But he was holding on to a six-second advantage over Peter Hickman. There's Bruce Anstey. Superb gear change and going away. He holds on to that fifth position, but it probably will drop down to about ninth with the arrival of Gary Johnson, David Johnson, Michael Rutter, and Dean Harrison. It should be Dean Harrison, I think, that will be the next year interview at Ramsey Hairpin. It certainly is. Down through the box, number 12, Michael Rutter behind. Ooh, that was a bit close, too. The boys are just getting a bit ragged now on that. They're absolutely on the limit, and uh, certainly Ramsey Hairpin takes a lot of local traffic, and if you're just fractionally offline, it just drops out a bit. There's number three. He's with us here now, followed by number seven. I think that was the case as it was on the previous lap. James Hillier just uh, heading off Gary Johnson there, so that will give us the opportunity to do the top nine. It is number one. The leader, Michael Dunlop, from lap one here at Ramsey Hairpin and maintaining it by 23 seconds from number four, Ian Hutchinson. Ian Hutchinson, in turn, holds a 24-second advantage over in third place, number one, John McGuinness. Dean Harrison into fourth place, number 12. He's 36 seconds down on John McGuinness. In fifth place, number five, Peter Hickman, three seconds down on Dean Harrison, 3.859 is the official margin there. In sixth place, number nine, Michael Rutter, 26 seconds down on Peter Hickman. Seventh place for number seven, Gary Johnson, but 36 seconds down on Michael Rutter, and that is visual on the road. In eighth place, number two, Bruce Anstey, he's six and a half seconds down on Gary Johnson, so there could be something in that to, to, to uh, maintain. In ninth place, number two, Bruce Anstey, six seconds down. In 10th, number 13, it should be him here now, Lee Johnston. It certainly is, and the Norton ahead of him this time. And certainly the two of them go around. So that is the battle there. David Johnson now up to seventh place. He's 27 seconds behind Michael Rutter in sixth, but then he is eight and a half seconds ahead of in eighth place, Gary Johnston. So David Johnson on the Norton through Ramsey successfully on lap number five, heading out uh, through the bungalow now. I can tell you it's 22 seconds that the lead is for Michael Dunlop at the bungalow. John McGuinness, 28 seconds down on Ian Hutchinson. So that would suggest that it's still John McGuinness who leads on the road from Michael Dunlop at the bungalow. No, it has been changed. 
It looks as though Dunlop is leading on the road at the bungalow, but that he's still leading in the race by 22 seconds. Back to the grandstand. What are you taking home from this year's TT? Visit Motorsport Merchandise and take home more than just memories. Motorsport Merchandise are the proud producers of all official TT clothing. Find them directly behind the grandstand, next door to Marks and Spencer's Douglas, or at Manx Shirts on the Promenade, stockists of the entire TT range. So make it official. Take home TT clothing for more than just memories, and the perfect reminder of your Isle of Man TT. Would owners of domestic animals and livestock adjoining the TT course please ensure that they are secure during the practice and race periods? Well, yes, sir, but the bungalow... Uh... 22.2 seconds as Roy was saying and uh, Michael Dunlop seems to have a firm grip of this battle of the 11 time TT winners also involved in there as they're all indicated now lights on for 6, 4 and 1 at Kronk Nimona. Yeah, involved in there is also a 23-time TT winner in John McGuinness and uh, just coming out onto Glen Crutchy Road is uh, it's Michael Dunlop who's leading on the road. So we're going to see Michael Dunlop come from uh, out of the shadow of the trees as we look out. It's not bright sunshine. There's just a nice uh, high cloud and no glare. Here he is. And there's the cavalry behind the Guinness right on the rear wheel there of... Uh, uh, Ian Hutchinson and, uh, well, Michael Dunlop, quite a, an advanced lead now on the road. Michael Dunlop then on that lap, 125.790. Hutchinson, 125.378. And McGuinness, 124.849. Dunlop has a lead over Hutchinson of 22.4 seconds and a further 30 seconds back, 30.1 to be precise, is John McGuinness. Nobody else uh, in sight. Uh, 90 you now being indicated at uh, Kronk Nimona as uh, Peter Hickman will probably, the front three are just so, so far ahead. And just to recap, opening lap from a standing start, and it was uh, the sub 17 minute lap, 133.369 from a standing start, and then. Michael Dunlop, 133.393, a new outright lap record. I mean, just set the one the lap before on lap two. That now stands at 16 minutes, 58.254. And that is Hickman going through. And uh, Hickman, 124.15. So he's currently indicated in fourth place. But we've got Dean Harrison to slot in. And the gap between them was down to 0.7. So Hickman could move his way up into fourth place. So uh, let's just see where uh, Dean Harrison is. He is indicated at Kronk Nimona, the light on for number 12. But will it be Hickman or Harrison in fourth place? Alessandro Polita, Italian newcomer, 118.52. That is Anstey. Anstey then on that lap. 122.67 of course that includes the pit stop so we await to see Dean Harrison come on to uh, Glen Crutchy Road and he is along with Michael Rutter and this will tell us if Hickman has managed to he's been niggling away at that lead he's been coming down sector by sector by a couple of seconds and now he has the opportunity to get ahead there's Harrison there's Rutter Who's in fourth? It's Peter Hickman. He's got ahead. Peter Hickman by 0.3. He now has an advantage over Dean Harrison. So Hickman up into fourth place. Dean Harrison is fifth. Sixth place is Michael Rutter as Hillier goes through. And also Gary Johnson. Sixth place, Michael Rutter. Gary Johnson is in seventh place. In eighth place, Bruce Anstey. And ninth is James Hillier. The gaps then. Michael Dunlop leads Ian Hutchinson by 22.4. Hutchinson leads third place John McGuinness by 30.1. Third place McGuinness leads fourth place Hickman by 39.1. Hickman leads fifth place Dean Harrison by 0 0.3. In sixth, 30.5 down is Michael Rutter. Seventh, 
is Gary Johnson. He's 36.1 down on Rutter. Eighth is number two, Bruce Sandsty. He's only 0.8 down on seventh place, Johnson. And in ninth place is uh, number three, James Hillier. Also got, of course, uh, David Johnson to slot in, and he should be coming through along with Lee Johnston very shortly onto uh, Glen Crutchley Road. And uh, David Johnson could go into seventh. We'll just see him through here. He is through now, and uh, where does he slot in? No time to tell you. Let's go to Glen Helen. Yes, uh, we're just awaiting the arrival of the first of the uh, machines on the road. He has two out of Glen Helen, two. There's clapping, there's programmes waving. It's Michael Dunlop and Ian Hutchinson together on the road. John McGuinness just a few yards behind them. There's a little bit of traffic up ahead. Uh, Hudson Kenyuk about 10 seconds ahead of the group. Uh, that's uh, 77 going through there now. That's uh, Xavier Denis. Uh, Hudson Kenyuk is just a little bit ahead of them, as is Dave Hewson. But uh, Danny Webb about a minute and a half and Craig Neve two minutes ahead of them. So apart from those four and one other that sneaked through just as they were coming around to Glen Helen 2, uh, there's just five bikes ahead of them. So it's pretty much a clear track. A little bit of traffic, but nothing too heavy. So uh, it doesn't look like there are going to be any surprise maneuvers uh, in the closing stages of this race. Michael Dunlop's lead. He leads Ian Hutchinson on the last lap here at Glen Helen by 20 seconds. John McGuinness in third place. He's 33 seconds down on Hutchie. So that is Michael Dunlop with a 20-second lead. And uh, he can... Back say so he can coast round but he can afford to go a little bit easier on the bike make sure he nurses it home as Joachim van den Hook comes through on his fifth lap he's got a little bit more work to do this afternoon but it does look like Michael Dunlop with a 20 second lead here at Glen Helen on the last lap is probably going to take this superbike race uh, there is just that little bit of work to do he's only about a, about a quarter of the way around the course here so uh, Peter Hickman, a uh, great ride from him this afternoon, holding on to fourth place. He is 39 seconds down on third place, John McGuinness, but looks like he may just hold that. We need to see Dean Harrison, though, just to see what the gap was down to less than a second. That was 75 through on his fifth lap. That's Tony Redmond. Uh, so Tony safely through on lap five, but again, a little bit more work for him to do. The gap between Hickman and Harrison at the grandstand at the end of the lap was just a third of a second. Let's see if Peter Hickman can hold on to that fourth place. Uh, Dean Harrison won't be too far away now. Machines went their way up the valley. That's the highest start of number 64. That's Bruce Anstey. Uh, 64, Danny Webb and uh, Bruce Anstey there fifth place at the moment but he will get nudged back a little that's 84 that is Richard McLaughlin uh, but he again has got another lap to do after this so he is not going to feature up there and uh, he has got a little bit of clear track around him as well so it doesn't look like he's going to uh, impede anyone else's progress either but uh, the bike that we need to see is the number 12 machine of Dean Harrison just a third of a second splitting them uh, between uh, fourth and fifth place. There is Dean Harrison, closely followed by Michael Rutter on the road. And uh, a couple of higher start numbers sneak through there. 80 at the back of that lot. 80 was Julianne Tonucci. James Hillier through on his final lap, closely followed by Gary Johnson on the road. And the last of that gaggle of three was Mark Goodings on the number 70 bike. And that's 89 through there again. Again, that's Seamus Elliott on the people's bike, but uh, he has got another lap to go. Your leaderboard then on the final lap at Glen Helen, Michael Dunlop leads Ian Hutchinson by 20 seconds. John McGuinness is in third, 33 seconds back on Hutchinson. In fourth, it's number five, Peter Hickman. He's 39 seconds back on John McGuinness. And in fifth place, number 12, Dean Harrison, six seconds back on Hickman. That is number 91 through Alessandro Polita. And again, another higher of start number, that's uh, 78, Alan Connor. Um, in sixth place, it's Michael Rutter, number nine. He's 31 seconds down on Dean Harrison. In seventh place, number two, Bruce Anstey. He's 32 seconds back on Rutter. In eighth place, Gary Johnson, number seven. He is two seconds down on Bruce Anstey. And in ninth place at the moment, James Hillier. Uh, 38 seconds back on Johnson but of course uh, Lee Johnston needs to come through here just to sort out what that position is talk to the devil there he is Lee Johnston with Davo Johnson right behind him on the Norton 
Dave Johnson now takes seventh. He's 26 seconds back on sixth place. Rutter in eighth. It's Bruce Anstey. Ninth place, Gary Johnson. Tenth place, number 13, Lee Johnston. And 11th place, James Hillier. And number three, 27 seconds down on 10th place, Lee Johnston. Uh, so no real changes to the top end of the leaderboard from the end of the last lap other than uh, Gary Johnson, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Dave Johnson is uh, ahead of Gary Johnson and uh, James Hillier just outside the top 10. Uh, Horst Zeiger I see at the grandstand, great ride from him this afternoon at the end of lap five, uh, holding on to 15th position and uh, 16th, number 50, Derek Shields, a great ride from him this afternoon as well. And James Cowton, former Max Grand Prix winner, 18th, just sneaking inside the top 20. And again, another Max Grand Prix name is getting inside the top 20, number 37, Michael Sweeney. So the Max Grand Prix, really a breeding ground for uh, the TT, and uh, it's great to see the riders making the progression. But at Glen Helen, on the final lap, it is Michael Dunlop with a very comfortable 20-second lead over number four, Ian Hutchinson. John McGuinness in third place, 33 seconds back on Hutchinson. Fourth is number five, Peter Hickman. He's 39 back on McGuinness. And making up your top five, number 12, Dean Harrison. Six seconds back on Peter Hickman. Back to you at the grandstand. Thanks very much, Dave, there out at Glen Helen. Let's catch up on the newcomers and their fastest laps. Uh, Jochen van der Hoek, uh, best in practice, 121.060. Of course, a race totally different. 120, though, 0.03. Seamus Elliott for the uh, People's Bike uh, has gone round at 118.76 on his opening lap. Alessandro Polita, 119.10 on his opening lap. And Mike Booth, 120.12 on his second lap. Let's go to Ramsey Hairpin and Roy. Yep, on the day we lost Mohammed Ali, the greatest. We've had the greatest ever lap round the TT course. It'll be interesting to see. We do feel as though Ian Hutchinson had got the lead back on the road at the lap bridge. But what will it be here at Ramsey? As number 67 is here with us now. Well, I'm sure they will be overtaken by the race leaders. That's David Hewson. And it is the case. Ian Hutchinson leads into Ramsey Hairpin. But Michael Dunlop right behind him and looking as though it's good and here's John McGuinness now he's dropped back a little bit but certainly he'll be fully aware of the situation and again that left hand goes up as number 86 is through there Hudson Kenyuk on the big BMW and number 56 is here now going through 56 we consult our program for that and we tell you that is Alan Ventner so there from Johannesburg South Africa all the journey and a regular man on the BSB circuit AJ we're more commonly known as AJ Venter and certainly Top Gun Racing there the machine through but another lap to do but the race leaders are through it's Michael Dunlop as you would expect now holding on to just that 19 second advantage because Ian Hutchinson ahead of him on the road as 77 is here with us now that is Zvaya Denis on the 1000cc Kawasaki through and he making the journey from France to compete round the world famous 37 and 3 quarter mountain course yes that fraction of a second the difference between Michael Dunlop and Ian Hutchinson on the road not making any difference at all to the overall but we want to check out that battle that's happening between Peter Hickman and Dean Harrison. And Peter Hickman is here, and he is noticeably quicker than the first two laps and looking fully aware that he has got that battle on. So Peter Hickman is through. He's 31 seconds down on John McGuinness. Misses a gear as he goes away here from us, just up towards the waterworks. You can hear the... Uh, the, the effects of the machines as they change gear just missed a gear another machine interview this is not the one we're looking for this is number 88 who's with us here now Jochen van der Hoek on the 1000cc Kawasaki going through and again Holland the Netherlands that uh, he has come from to compete round the mountain course and when you mention about mass starts on it I think the last mass start was the 67 production when they lined up across the road and then ran across to take the bikes down Bray Hill mass start Bruce Anstey here now at Ramsey safely round and through and doing a great job to complete the race as number 75 that's Anthony Redmond on the again the BM favoured BMW going Green Ant Racing seem to be the backers from that and I do believe there was a bit of a photo shoot down by Nobles Park number one Bowling Green the other day that seems like light years ago but certainly that was at the start of practice week 
where they had a bit of a meeting there and certainly he looks as though if he gets through will complete the distance so it looks as though Dean Harrison is maybe dropping down back further because he is with us here now and Michael Rutter oh dear me nearly nearly Michael Rutter had a collision there on the corner but safely through Dean Harrison and Michael Rutter and Peter Hickman has made the mark as well and certainly now holds on to that fourth place by 14.830 seconds there's the two Gary Johnson and certainly just ahead of him there James Hillier he's through as well Michael Rutter so where do they slot into our leaderboard here at Ramsey on the last lap Michael Dunlop leading by that 19.151 seconds from Ian Hutchinson in third place John McGuinness 38 seconds down on Hutchinson fourth for number five Peter Hickman he's 31 seconds behind John McGuinness but holds now on to a 14 and a half second advantage over in fifth place number 12 Dean Harrison in sixth place number nine Michael Rutter 30 seconds down on Harrison seventh for number two Bruce Anstey 32 seconds down on Michael Rutter within eighth place Gary Johnson he's four seconds only down though on Bruce Anstey ninth for number three James Hillier he is 39 seconds behind Gary Johnson and it would appear from the bungalow is that uh, well I think John McGuinness just me rolling it back a little bit certainly he's 44 seconds down now on Michael on uh, Ian Hutchinson but certainly probably just rolling it back to make sure there's the Norton for the last time round Ramsey and there is General Lee Johnson as well John Stun as number 91 has been involved in that Alessandro Polita on the Pence BMW number 78 is here with us now so we give all them a mention as they go through Alan Connor and certainly when you look at the results later on today when they're all posted very quickly indeed they will be you look at the person who finishes in 40th place probably averaging about 119 miles per hour it just seems unbelievable but that is the way the progress has been made safely through the bungalow Michael Dunlop holding on to that 19 0.265 lead over Ian Hutchinson John McGuinness it would appear slackening it back he's lost six seconds on the climb from Ramsey hairpin up to the bungalow but certainly no danger at all because he has a 27 second advantage at the bungalow over in fourth place number five Peter Hickman bit of interesting information coming through I do believe these commentaries are listened to and, and worldwide and I do believe there, believe there is a person out on Douglas Golf Course at the moment who's got the earpiece on competing in the Hutchinson Cup. Is it street legal, I ask myself. We'll have to ask Barry Skillicombe when he completes the round. So that is the position on the last lap from Ramsey Hairpin. Michael Dunlop, just that run down the mountain to, mountain to do. And certainly it will be very interesting, but history being made here on the first day of 2016 TT. Back to the grandstand. Thanks very much, Roy. Yes, an historic race we've seen here just to open up TT 2016. We've got <laughs> a whole scotch more races to come and much more enjoyment. But what a sensational opening race this RST Superbike has been. Up at the bungalow, uh, Michael Dunlop 19.2 seconds ahead of Ian Hutchinson. They're both now four and six indicated at Cronk Nimona. And no number one McGuinness there, though, yet. But Hutchinson and Dunlop indicated at Cronk Nimona. Here he is. That's Hutchinson. There is Dunlop. Fantastic. The sub-17 minute man. 12 wins. He's now fifth on the all-time list. Only Halewood, Molyneux, McGuinness and Uncle Joey ahead. 132.767 for Hutchinson on that last lap. 132.336. McGuinness wheelies across the line in third place. That's your top three. 133.393, the lap record by Dunlop on lap two. 16 minutes, 58.2. Let's go down to Chris Kinley. I think this place, when he comes in here, is going to absolutely erupt. As you quite rightly said, Tim, under that magical 17-minute mark, he's going to be coming in here very, very shortly, being returned, being clapped up the little return road that we have here. They've seen so many people come up here. Here's Hutchie into second place. Just wheels the Tyco BMW into there, and he goes, and here's your race winner, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Dunlop bashes the number one in. There he is, 12 times now, a TT winner. And Marty Marlowe, his good friend and longtime sponsor, 
goes straight in to give him a big, big pat. And all the family and friends all crowd around him. He gets a pat on the shoulder. And we'll get right in and let him get the lid off and tell him all about this race. He's done it. He's now got 12 wins on the list. <laughs> Just opens his eyes. And we'll let John McGuinness come in. I think John is here now also. We'll let him take his gloves off. Here's John into that third place, confirmed now by about 50-odd seconds it was, so he's there. John McGuinness, another podium on the mountain circuit. And the BMW boys are straight in, straight in, massive, massive hugs. The Hulk BMW boys, well, we'll let him get off. Gary Ryan's in there too, the Dunlop guys here ready to put the hat on. The BMW Motorrad guys give him a big, big shake of the right hand. Lots of handshakes, and the Mr. Hicken comes in, the boss, and listen to the reaction. You heard that there, or just slightly off mic. We'll let him take his other glove off. He's got his left one off. He's got his right one off, and the RI lid will be coming off very, very shortly. I'm sure he's going to want a big glug of fluid any moment now. 133 and a bit, and under 17 minutes, and uh, let's get in. Let's grab him. Michael Dunlop, 12 times a TT winner, and sub-17 minute laps. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, give us that lap speed again, Tim, so I can relay it exactly to him. Tim, whoa, just covers us in water. <laughs> give us that lap time again, Tim, in my ears, if you would. 133 point what? 133.393 is the new mark. 117. 16 minutes, 58.254 seconds. 16 minutes, 58.254, nearly 133.4, Michael massively congratulations from everybody on the Isle of Man and listening worldwide. Yes, yeah, steady, yeah. But, and <laughs> we lost about my pad on our, our way over and I thought, wow, look, the pressure was against us. They thought we were in the back foot and just, you know, I can't thank the boys enough. You know, great pit stop. Everyone's done its job. <laughs> like John, like you. Uh, everyone done its job. You know, and... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's for, I wanted another one, and that was what I wanted. And I knew I could do it, and that's it, you know. And if I could tell you where this this bike was built, the size of the workshop, the size of the team, you honestly wouldn't believe a word I said. You know. Tell I mean? us where was it? Well, you know, it's built in Church Place, uh, and the sons, Steve and Mark, who work on the bike, they look after the bike, and it's the smallest workshop I've ever seen, you know. And you know, he said uh, when Stuart approached me, he's like, you know. I can't give you a factory bike, Michael, but I can do my best for you. And I said, well, here, that's enough for me, so... And we done it. <laughs> Tell us about the rest of the race. Just from the start, you're off to a flyer. Yeah, we got away at the start, but we just... We, we, we didn't go mad then after two laps. We, 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 we just kept plugging away, just and sat in the groove, you know, and... They wanted to pass me in the last lap, and I let them pass, and... Just sat there, you know, it was all about bringing the bike home, you know, as I said, uh, Stuart built that engine himself there, just after the Northwest and stuff like that, and... For an old boy, he's all right. He's built a good motor. Two laps of a hover and 133 for you too. Two laps, first and second lap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, stand 33 and stand start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Steady enough, I steady enough, I. <laughs> Just. Just matter of fact, really. Yeah. What about the rest of the race? Though? I mean, no problems apart from the tank pad. No, the big girl sung lovely. First lap, we had a small issue, but nothing serious. But the big girl never missed a beat, you know. And it's, it's a credit to these boys, you know. And. I gave them a bit of work last night. We, we had a couple of problems, and they they, they stood up and been counted, you know. So uh, thanks to all the sponsors, you know, it's it's not just a, a small group, you know. It's a load of men, you know, throwing stuff in, and it's a hard a hard job all week. But we paid. The, thankfully, you know, Stuart said he'd give me a bike, and I said what I would do. And thankfully, there we go. We've we, I've given him the one that he's wanted, you know. So that's the main thing. When you started to see Hutchie on the road, you thought, right, that's it, I've got it in the bag now. Were you aware of what the situation was? I, I sort of grasped it, and then I got a bit, then somebody said to me, P, somebody said P1 minus again when I was in front of him. And I thought, oh, shit, that's, something's maybe happened or something. I, I, I couldn't, so I put a pressure on for about seven miles and pulled away again. And then looked, and I was like, oh, it's all right, we're all right. It must have been just a missed board, so yeah, that's the main thing. But no, it's, 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 it's an honour riding for these boys, and... Uh, it's good to win again, especially on a bike, you know. <laughs> Just, you know what I mean? I, I, we done it ourselves, and these boys done the best we could. When you came through and broke that lap record, the reaction here at the grandstand was like somebody scoring the winning cup in the World Cup final. It was amazing, Michael. Yeah, then I also would like to have heard it, you know. that's To do a 33 from a starting start, <laughs> pretty good now. Uh, but, look... <laughs> Just have to lift the bar in the next race. Well done. Thanks, boss. Cheers. Yeah, RST Superbike race winner there, Michael Dunlop. Brilliant stuff. Well done, Michael.
let's get into Hutchie and have a little have a little chat with him and uh, sorry buddy can I just jump around the side there if we can Ian just a quick chat second place I mean John when he he let you through there after the pit stop he obviously knew the situation were you thinking oh, go on John just let me pass yeah I mean uh, I knew the first race on the BM was going to be hard for me to try and beat Michael and uh I tried to be as calm and smooth as I could at the start and uh, minus seven seconds I was actually quite happy with because I was expecting to be minus seven seconds at the first sector. So after a couple of laps minus seven I was happy with but then I caught John at Parliament Square and it took me right up until Bungalow or somewhere to pass him and I just followed his pace all the way up there and then when I got in front of him I couldn't, I, I kind of lost my rhythm and come out of the pit stop and I don't know if we lost some time in the pit but it went from minus 7 to minus 15 from the pit and obviously I knew he could see me then because he's only 20 seconds behind me so that was the end of my race then finished so the last two laps I had another good go just so that I can uh, get some feeling for the bike for next Friday but I've got to be happy enough and Tyco BMW team have put a great bike under me and you know we've gone faster than we've ever been so well done to Michael it was a cracking race what about though track conditions around I didn't get a chance to ask Michael that he was he was off on one what was it like perfect obviously yeah it's good um, I mean there's more back markers than there's ever ever been we, we, we were like catching groups of five or six bikes at a time but uh, apart from that good yeah many changes to be made for Friday maybe just a little tweaks here and then yeah we need to just sit and look at holiday obviously that's my first six lap race I've ever done at BMW so we're going to improve from now and we'll sit down with the boys and uh, make a plan and see where we can go forward do you know what your fastest lap was of the race? No, no. If you can tell me that, my ear, Tim, and I'll relay it on to him because it's uh, well, it's covered in water now. It's probably broken me that lap. And Tim, if you got there, Hutchie's fastest lap of the race. One thirty-two point eight nine two. One thirty-two point eight nine two. One thirty-two point eight nine two. So under the existing lap record as it was. Yeah, what I did on a stalker last yeah, night. Strange. <laughs> well done, Hutchie. All right, cheers. Please, thank you very much for that. And we'll jump over the other side and maybe grab a word with John McGuinness, who is straight in to say to, uh, congratulations to. Uh, to, to Michael Dunlop uh, win the race and also straight over to Hutchie and sorry Neil just to jump in sorry Jules just to jump into the conversation well would you have taken this at the start because he went off like a man possessed Michael that you did too that was one of the quickest starts I've ever seen you do we were just discussing that there that uh, I was sort of way, way out of it to Glen Ellen on the first lap but I actually thought you know I've been doing it 20 years and I thought that was a good strong ride to, to Glen Ellen and we're just lacking a little bit on the start and then uh, when Hutchie passed me on lap two I thought I need to hang my boots up here I'm, I'm rubbish <laughs> you know it took 30 seconds at me but then I, I started going good sectors good sector times you know uh, I wasn't safe in third so I pushed hard lap three and four and got away from uh, I don't even know who it was Dean Harrison but Dean Harrison yeah I was just pushing on pushing on and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it you know I mean Hutchie had a ride on the road together and then Michael came past me on the last lap and he just thought them two were, were at each other I thought they might trip each other up and <laughs> knock each other off at hairpin or something but uh, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pleased with that. To stand on the podium and uh, with such good company and the, the, the speed we've all gone all week. And, you know, I think I think everybody should be proud of each other. We've done a, met all of them a good job. And, you know, we, we work well together, been together a long time. The old Fireblade's still a, a great package. And, you know, it's it's eight years, nine, nine years old now. So once I get a new bike, I'll be, I'll be back in there again. You'll be back in there on Friday. After the pit stop, though, you seen where Hutchie was. He was coming out right alongside you. Let, you waved him through. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, when he came past me, he woke me up a bit, really, and I thought, right, let's get on the back of Uchi here and uh, try and get on the podium. And uh, it wasn't fair for me to be holding him up or anything, so I waved him past. I waved him past on the left, and he could pass me on the right, yeah, and nearly <laughs> jumped out of my skin. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I just sat behind him for lap three, and it, it, we had a good, strong lap three together. And lap four, I passed him at Bishop's Court. I seemed to seem to just lose his rhythm a little bit, maybe. And uh, you know, I just kept, uh, just kept him, just I had to pass him and. You know, make sure my third was going to consolidate my third place. But, uh, you know, Dunlop, tyres, everything. The bike was absolutely faultless. Two great pit stops by Julian and the boys. And, uh, you know, I'm just proud to be studying the podium. You know, that, you know, I can, sometimes it's not your day. You know, I've had my day and well, I will have my day again. But, uh, you know, today we're on the podium with two hot shots and I'm happy with that. 133.4, Michael did too. I mean, you've set some benchmarks around here. There's another one gone. Was that, was that the last lap? No, no, the, the first lap and the second lap. You know, the, first, the, the first lap was under 17 minutes, 16.58 and a bit. <laughs> He's looking a bit bemused by that. Well, you know, I've done 17.3, so slowing down for the pits last year. So, you know, there's no reason why we can't build on that and uh, go forward from that from the senior. But, uh, yeah, I mean, good luck to the kid. You know, good luck to everybody. I can't. I held the lap record from 2004, but Bruce borrowed it for a year in 2014 and got it back. You know, I, I can't hold on to it forever, but... Uh, you know, good luck to him. You know, I've lost my lap record, but I, I've had it, I had it a long, long time. Oh, yeah, 
you can have that right, John. We'll let you get into the one, two, three, four. Well done, John. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. There's your first three in the RST, Sup RST Superbike TT, and we'll hand it back to you, Tim, in the tower. Yeah, very positive, John McGuinness, I thought, down there in the uh, uh, winner's enclosure. Uh, a new race record for Michael Dunlop by one minute, 15.643 seconds. Uh, previously, that was held last year by Bruce Anstey, but one minute, 15.643 seconds. Taken off Bruce Anstey's mark from 2015. New race record for Michael Dunlop, who's uh, just uh, rewriting those record books today. I can tell you, Ian Hutchinson was also inside the uh, old race record as well. Uh, number 43, uh, Chris Dixon, has uh, come off at Keppel Gate. He's been air medded to Nobles, uh, no reason for concern. 43, Chris Dixon off at Keppel Gate, uh, air med to Nobles, no reason for concern on that. A couple of notable laps before we go into the uh, classified uh, look at the superbike uh, peter hickman fastest ever only his third year here remember 132.465 miles per hour on that last lap for hickey and david johnson on the norton 130.872 130 130.872 for the norton and davo johnson an incident at Sarah's for number 80, Julian Tonuiti, we're hearing, but the rider OK is the information being re relayed. Number 80, Julian Tonuiti at Sarah's, rider OK. So, Michael Dunlop, the winner, a last lap of 132.336 miles per hour. A total race time of one hour, 44 minutes, 14.259 seconds. 19 seconds back in second was number four, Ian Hutchinson. A final lap of 132.767. A total race time of one hour, 44 minutes, 33.323 seconds. 54.175 down on Hutchinson in third was number one, John McGuinness. Last lap of 129.720 miles per hour. A race time of one hour, 45 minutes, 27.498 seconds. In fourth, it was number five, Peter Hickman. Last lap of 132.465. Well done there, Hickey. He was 17.4 down on McGuinness. In fifth place was number 12, Dean Harrison. Dean Harrison was 24.9 down on Hickman. A last lap for Dean of 129.362 miles per hour. In sixth and going well was number nine, Michael Rutter on the BMW. Last lap of 129.391. He was 30.3 seconds down on Harrison in fifth. In seventh was number 15, David Johnson on the Norton. A last lap of 130.872. Stuart Garner will be very happy with that. And he was 16.2 down on Rutter. In eighth position was number two, Bruce Anstey on the Honda. 130.789 miles per hour on the last lap. He was nine and a half seconds down on Norton on the uh, Johnson on the Norton. Uh, a correction. We're hearing uh, it was uh, 89 that was involved in the incident, uh, not 80 at uh, Sarah's. Uh, so correction on that. We're being informed uh, from downstairs. Uh, uh, Seamus Elliott, it is. Uh, but again, the information is that the rider is okay. So we nearly had uh, David Johnson or Norton on the David Johnson, but we got it the right way round. So uh, ninth place, Gary Johnson on the BMW. He was 10.5 down on Anstia. Last lap for Gary of 129.370. And in 10th, number 13, Lee Johnston. He was only 0.091 down on ninth place, Gary Johnson. 
and a last lap for Lee of 130.692. 11th was at number three, that's James Hillier. 12th was number 19, Steve Mercer. Last lap for him of 129.323, so he's in the 129s. Uh, James Hillier, 129.717 on his last lap. 13th going well was Daniel Hegarty, number 25. 128.431 on his last lap. In 14th, number 20, Ivan Linton, 125.7 on his last lap. 15th, number 31, Horse Seiger. And I think in this race, he's gone quicker than he's ever gone before. 127.196 on the last lap. 16th was number 50, Derek Shields. 17th, number 18, Martin Jessup. 18th, number 29, James Cowton. 19th was number 36, Jamie Coward. 20th, number 26, Ryan Neen. And uh, we also uh, then have in 21st position, uh, Alan Bonner. And that's as far down as I can go on uh, this screen. But uh, we have got the riders making their way up now. And uh, down below, there's a whole, a whole gaggle there of uh, photographers and cameras, and the crews, of course, will be coming up. But uh, photographs being taken uh, of the top three further down as well. John McGuinness is certainly making his way through. I can see the Tyco BMW boys down there in uh, the pit lane in front of the rostrum. And we are about to, uh, well, in a few minutes' time, have our podium ceremony for the RST Superbike. And uh, making the presentations will be Johnny Towers. So he's, uh, he's deciding he's doing everything today. He's starting the race and doing the podium as well. And quite right, you can do that when you're a managing director of a company. And you can see, yep, John making his way up. I thought he was really positive down in the, that uh, re interview with Chris Kinley. And he's talking away to Ewan, his son. And now Michael Dunlop, the sub 17 minute man, chatting away on his uh, way up, holding his uh, gloves in his right hand and the helmet in his left hand, and looking for. Ian Hutchinson, where is Ian? Is he already down there? Must be already down there. Is it, huh? There he is. He's talking to John McGuinness now. I can see him. See John's wife Becky there, Rebecca. And yeah, plenty of interest, and they'll get called forward very shortly. I can see Paul Phillips down there, just uh, ushering the top three up. I can see the trophy as well down there, the Superbike TT trophy. And uh, we will now see the boys head up to the top. And so we will now cue the fanfare. <laughs> So the scouts with the Union Jack and uh, the Manx flag are in position. One to the right, one to the left, and there is John McGuinness into the uh, third place. Ian Hutchinson makes his way up, and there is your RST Superbike winners. So we can see the hats are there. We've got also Johnny Towers to make the presentation and the garland. So, Ladies and gentlemen, for the RST Superbike in third place from England, on a Honda, John McGuinness. In second place from England, on a BMW, Ian Hutchinson. And the RST Superbike winner from Northern Ireland, on a BMW, the sub-17 minute man, Michael Dunlop. You can hear the applause ringing out, and he, oh yes, just holds that trophy one-handed aloft, and well done indeed to Michael. All the photographs being taken, 
the TT Superbike Tourist Trophy awarded 